September 16, 2019, Selectman's Meeting. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have to do anything about that number one, RSA 91-A? You just have to make a motion to allow a member okay. to participate by phone. RSA 91-A, semicolon two, three, small a, permission to participate by telephone for Regina Barnes. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank nope. you. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Moving Thank on you. to public comment. Anyone wishing? For Please join us at the podium. Charlie. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Preston, Glade Path, Hampton. Um, community announcement. If anybody wants to see a great Christmas light show, try Badcock Ave. For people who are not familiar with it, it runs parallel to Brown Ave, just to the west. There's a great Christmas light show down there. They did a great job. Another thing I wanted to speak about briefly was the uh, trash recycle. I don't know what it's about about a Warren article coming up. But I'm hoping that something will be done this year regardless of any water, uh, Warren article, whether it goes up or down. I don't even know what it's about at this point. But I've, I've stressed that, you know, maybe this board and maybe the business people in town, you know, especially at the beach, but the whole town, could consider with the strokes of three pens, I, could, I think you could very easily, you know, get a lot of weight out of the trash by saying no commercial single serve glass bottles you know and I, and I think you can do that i think you have the power to do that the authority and hopefully the businesses get together and step up to the plate and you know we can get this done something to be done this year coming for the summer thank you very very much thank you any other public comment please join us michael clarence 592 lafayette road i just wanted to make a comment about uh I know you guys can't do anything about it, but there was a big argument in here about the planning board with uh, Tom McGurk, and um, I heard Charlie say about um, he, had a, uh, he violated the variance. He said, if you're going to build a house and the height's 60 feet, and he went bigger, and the width is bigger, and there was another guy, that a little jacks, the frontage and everything. Uh, I hope the, uh, the building inspectors would say, hey, if you build it, too big, knock it down. My cousin, Gadwa, he was a he was an inspector in town here for many years, 30, 40 years. And he didn't put up with that at all. And I just hope something gets done. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Jay, are you gonna join us? Jed Carpentier here as uh, President of the Professional Firefighters of Hampton, Local 2664. Um, I believe tonight the board will be hearing uh, Deputy Town Manager Sullivan present um, the tentative agreements between the two bargaining units um, within the fire department ranks. Uh, thank you to Deputy Town Manager Sullivan and uh, Selectman Waddell and the rest of the team that was assembled on conducting and engaging in a civil and fair and equitable process for both sides and everybody involved. Um, there are two contracts within the firefighter ranks, <coughs> one that covers the firefighters <laughs> and the fire alarm operators, and the second that covers the supervisors and the secretaries. Um, the changes before you tonight we feel are fair and equitable for both sides. Uh, and from the town's perspective, I think it keeps your fire department in a position to attract continue to attract top tier candidates going forward and prevents um, our members from going back backwards with what we believe are responsible cost of living adjustments. But we think the first step in convincing the voters uh, that this is an important priority um, for the town is a 5-0 vote from this board here tonight. Um, so I'm here to humbly ask for all of your approval of both of the contract agreements. Um, for both of the firefighter uh, bargaining units here in town. Uh, and thank you in advance for that vote. Have Jim, a great night. I don't want to leave you out of Christmas. Oh, very good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any other people, uh, person wishing to make public comment? 
Seeing none, we will move to announce what's in the community calendar. Mrs. Wolfley? Nothing at the moment, sir. Jim? Uh, no, just that there might be a little snowstorm tomorrow or something, so <laughs> be careful driving, please. Mm -hmm. Longtime friend of the beach, Lenny Jewett, passed away this week. Uh, a lot of people knew her. She was, she was quite the character and quite the nice lady, and uh, we're going to be sad to see her go, and, and we're going to miss her. So thank you. Yeah, that was the first place I worked at in Hampton. They, no one in Hampton do, did blow-dry haircuts. I was the only one, so they had me do them only on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so that was something. Um, moving on to the approval of minutes. Mr. Chairman, I will move the December 2 minutes of this board, public and non-public sessions. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Aye. Next, we have the consent agenda. Number one, the cemetery deed. Um, I'll move, move the consent agenda. And I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mm -hmm. Next, we have appointments. Number one is Nancy Stiles, Hampton Beach Area Commission. Welcome. Just back from Florida. Thank you. <laughs> Just back, right. Wasn't all that warm down there. You'll wish either. you were back tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. First of all, I would like to say that while I had uh, readied the report, for, uh, my intention was to get it to you by November 1st. However, I found them cl uh, cleanly uh, clipped together on my computer when I got home. So I brought them in as soon as I got home on December 8th. And so I, I turned them in at that time. So I hope you had, a, had time to review them. And my intent tonight is to just give you an overview and answer any questions that you might have. In the report, I did provide for you a copy of the legislative determined responsibilities of HBAC, Hampton Beach Area Commission, uh, and a listing of the current commissioners and their um, terms of office dates. And I would like to thank Fran McMahon. He did a yeoman's service uh, on the commission for a number of years and decided not to uh, be renominated, and the uh, re uh, RPC uh, nominated Barbara Kravitz uh, in his place. So thanks to both of them. I think they're both val very valuable members of the commission. Our activities for uh, 2019, uh, first of all, we heard from the Hampton reps and the senator to find out what uh, legislation was going forward uh, that might impact the town or the beach or both. Uh, and uh, we will probably do that again in January, invite them in to uh, report to us again. And then we will monitor those uh, as they go forward. Uh, we reinstated uh, the review team to work uh, with the beach developers. We had a couple of developers at the beach call me and ask for the Hampton Beach Area Commission's support. And I said, well, I've got to have somebody to go and look at it first. So we appointed uh, three members of the commission to, uh, all, all beach uh, members actually, uh, to go and look at it and to provide comment and then report back to the commission whether or not it was any action that we should take on it. And I think, I believe they did that with a couple of um, um, developments this year. Uh, we were asked to appoint someone to sit on the Hampton Beach uh, <coughs> Uh, the Hampton Master Plan Committee and first uh, Chairman Griffin uh, served in that capacity and then um, this past October when we go through the uh, process of electing chairman etc cetera, etc cetera, he asked us to replace him and he has been replaced with uh, 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 Chuck Rage so we do have we do bring a voice to that to that committee and in approaching the environmental segments of the master plan, as you know, last year we finished, we finished up the uh, transportation section of the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan. And so we began to look forward uh, towards the environmental segments to see what we might do about uh, bringing the master plan up to standard uh, and current. Uh, and we found that there were, uh, first of all, we wanted to hear from people. So uh, we invited a bunch of uh, different people and we started with our uh, Fred Rice, who was former representative. He was also the HBAC chair and a member of the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. So he reviewed us on what has taken place since that commission made its report. 
uh, Natalie Morrison from the New Hampshire Coastal Associ uh, uh, Program, uh, New Hampshire uh, DES, uh, updated us on their work. Uh, Samara Eminger uh, from the Office of uh, Strategic Initiatives and uh, Division of Planning, and Thomas O'Connor, uh, Regional Sales Manager for New England from Wright <coughs> Flood Insurance, came together and shared with us those things. Brought, and the, all of these groups brought PowerPoints uh, with them. Tom McGurk uh, updated us on the Solid Waste Committee, um, and I believe we have some uh, voice there as well. And then uh, Jason Bashan and uh, Ann uh, Carnaby uh, presented on the uh, update to the Hampton, Ma uh, Hampton Master Plan, what was going on with that. We also received periodical reports from the Coastal Hazards uh, Adaptation, also known as um, CHAT, from time to time. After uh, viewing or listening to all of that, uh, the commissioners decided that there were so many voices coming for t <laughs> coming together on uh, environmental issues yeah. that as long as we had some connection with those groups, uh, that it was probably best to sit tight a little bit and find out what the town was doing uh, when they did when they reviewed the master plan. And we will sit quietly, <laughs> I think, uh, and uh, monitor that and be supportive of it going forward. Mm -hmm. So we do have a voice on it, so we will um, act accordingly. In October is when we uh, do our voices, a voice of updating the uh, leadership of the uh, commission. And Vice uh, Chair Merrill and I uh, presented to, well, let me skip that. Um, uh, Vice Chair Merrill and I are presented to the RPC, Rockingham Planning Commission, uh, with support letters from the Village District, the Town of Hampton, the Hampton Planning Board, New Hampshire DOT, the Hampton Area uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, and Ham uh, HBAC was successful in getting the recognition of uh, reconstruction of Route 1A and the Hampton River Bridge included in the Comprehensive Economic Development. Uh, priority list, which is really very beneficial to uh, when we're looking for federal dollars. Um, so uh, we were very happy about that and thankful for all of the letters of support that we received. At the Gasset, which is the Governor's Advisory Commission on Intermodal Transportation meeting in Hampton, I was joined with many Hampton citizens in requesting that during the engineering process of the rehabilitation of Route 1A, uh, that consideration be given to include design from High Street to the bridge. Uh, and many, we had heard in the past that they were looking at Winnicott to the bridge and uh, maybe uh, Ashworth to the bridge and mm -hmm. so uh, uh, Rocky Bend to the bridge. And we said, you know, if you're going to design a yeah. road, design the road. Uh, <laughs> and the Hampton Beach Area Commission master plan really spoke to changes from ex uh, from High Street yep. to the bridge. And so we wanted them to take a look at that and make a uh, and actually execute a plan for that. Whether they plan to do it in piecemeal, which I, for the life of me, I can't figure out how, how you could do it in piecemeal, but no. uh, anyway, the plan would be in place so that uh, we would know exactly what that area would look like, where the drainage would be, and so forth and so on. And we got a lot of support from that, and Councillor um, Prescott was very supportive, as was DOT when they looked at it. So I'm, I will, we will follow that to make sure that that plan gets put in place anyway. Um, I started to print out the PowerPoints of some of the presentations that we received. And when I ran out of the first ink cartridge, I went and bought another one and printed some of that. And then when I got to the next one, um, I found that there were 83 pages to that one. So I printed the pertinent uh, sections of that for Hampton, and I have copies here that I will give to the chairman. But I will be more than happy to um, send the links so you, can, so you can actually sit and look at all of the PowerPoints of all of the uh, presentations that, that we heard during the process. Um, so uh, in 2020, in addition to other concerns or issues that might arise, we will spend some time looking at ways to accomplish an update the environmental components of the master plan 
and the most professional, efficient, and cost-effective way to do this, as well as to look at financial uh, resources to support that effort. So that will be one of our major projects uh, going forward in, t in 2020. Um, open to questions, or if you would like me to invite any of the past chairs to come and collectively we speak all to you about what has happened since 2003 when um, the Hampton Beach Area Commission was formed. We can let you know what's been going on, who we've been working with, what, we've, what has been accomplished, and so forth and so on. I would be most, ha most happy to organize that if that's something that you would like. So I'm open to questions. Okay. Um, one thing I would like to say is that um, now that Hampton uh, has the study that's going to be f going forward about the flooding, it would be great if some of the information, if somehow what they need to know might be beneficial for what the plan for Ocean Boulevard is and the other way around. You know, maybe they could help each other or have good ideas or whatever. But well, We can make sure that the transportation update, uh, a copy that gets given to whoever you want me to give yeah. it to, I'll, I'll make sure of that. Do you think that's a good idea, Mr. Welch? Absolutely. Everybody yeah. needs to get together with this program. So right. maybe if between you and Jamie, we can keep uh, this going forward because we really don't know how long it's going to be for the uh, update, but it seems to be coming along. Just let me know who I need to get that to, and I will have it done before the end of the year. Okay, great. And Mrs. Wolseley? Yes, I was watching an ECN a couple of days ago, and uh, they had the pictures with the reporter out at the beach showing the flooding and that's it's about time we addressed the flooding situation down there including the planning board <laughs> we can't keep issuing building permits or raising wonderful buildings or stuff that was that was a real eye-opener to watch that newscast and we can't keep dragging our feet well thank you for that because that's something that really you know I I know that people talk about uh, sea level rise, whether it's good, whether it's mm -hmm. bad, whether it's possible, whether it isn't possible, if so, how much, and when, and where, and how. Uh, but we are seeing a lot of flooding uh, and a lot of uh, ocean, uh, surge, water surge coming over the, yes. over the wall, over the wall, and up the back. And um, I think it is time that the planning board took a hard look at that uh, as to when people ask for buildings what needs to be done. There are ways to handle some of that, and that is mentioned in some of the PowerPoints that we received. Uh, we got one uh, of the flood maps. We got one of um, elevation and acquisition uh, projects. Mm -hmm. We got one on mitigation ideas, um, several things. So I, I'll be glad to hand mm -hmm. those to the chairman. And as I said, if you want me to send the links to any of you, yeah. just let me know, and, uh, and I will do that. Yeah. I think it's important to know that, like, for instance, yesterday was not a common flooding um, uh, oh, situation. Yes, it, it wasn't from water coming over from the ocean. It's, from, it's the, from rain. It's from rain. And my guess is it's from rivers and things like that are backing into the marsh from the other side. I don't know if that's how it works, but it seems to me that's how it is. Now, ordinarily, because I live in an area where when I have a full... Uh, uh, amount of water coming onto my property like I did yesterday, there was none today or the following day, not one little bit. Yeah. So that's a sign that it was rain as far as I can see. I think see. precipitation is a big yeah. issue and, and it's about really not how much rain, we can do about that. <laughs> it's about how the uh, wind goes. Uh -huh. And yesterday the wind was coming from, uh, it wasn't coming from the ocean, it was coming from the other way. And that's what caused that flooding yesterday. So it isn't always about the ocean. Right. And I think that that's something that's lost on a lot of people. It's hard for me to understand it, but I've, I've really paid so much attention to it lately. But that was a unique situation because ordinarily when there was so much water, there would definitely be water on the next day. There wasn't a bit the next day. And again, the wind was still coming from the opposite direction and pushing against the ocean. So it was keeping the ocean out. Well, I know that one of the things they've talked about uh, in Boston, Boston Harbor, and so forth, it's there are so many heavy buildings being built 
that the mm -hmm. land is actually sinking. It isn't no, well, that's that's necessarily in that the water is coming up. It's that it the is. land is sinking. Yes. <laughs> it's peat. Underneath yeah. Hampton, all along the marsh, it's yeah. all peat. And it is sinking. It contracts. It contracts because it's been uh, blacktopped and things like that. Jim? Yeah, I'll just quickly, that was a good report. Thank you for it. And I'm just going to quickly defend the, uh, the planning board a little bit. They do take the flooding seriously. They do investigate it. They do look at it. They do look at it when they make plans. So I think that's important to know. Uh, you know, flooding is a real problem. We've got a lot of people looking at it, a lot of different uh, groups, and uh, there's a lot of very hard choices that are going to have to be made, and people better be aware of that. But nice report. Well, thank you. And I didn't re really mean to chastise the planning board in any way. I just said that's one of the, one of the places that really stop measures can be taken. Right. No, I think it was a good report. Yeah, we had, I know Portsmouth had 3.7 inches of rain the other day. And so that's, that's quite a bit. If you notice, even Bachelor's Pond up there. It was down, a record, all-time record. Bachelor's Pond was about three and a half feet from top in the road, four feet from top in the road. So by the, by the afternoon, it was all down. And all and that water went down the marsh someplace. So. And the, uh, the rivers were all at record heights. Absolutely. So, so. Th this was actually a river event from yeah. what I can see. I mean... It, the, the high tides that are supposed to come for this month, I believe, are Chris, day before Christmas, Christmas, and the day after Christmas. Correct. So that wasn't even, yeah. but it, I did look, it did say it was supposed it to be 9.8. Well, as long as that drainage works. If that, that, if works, that rain had happened on one of those days, because that would have been, that would have really told you yeah. some flooding. So but good report, Nancy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, Mr. Chairman? I, I wanted to mention, too, that the for the gentleman that's out there in the audience. The final changes that were made on the Little Jack property were made by the state, not the local uh, planning board. Uh, the state made them move the building and made them put a seawall around the back of it. And um, it remains to be seen how all that's going to go. I would presume it's going to go better. But if it doesn't, I think there's going to be a lot of angry people out there. But let's hope it's an improvement. Mrs. Walsby? I'm not a geologist or whatever, but if you have to take a boat to get to your house, if you have to go and look at that screen and see all that flooding, and those houses were surrounded by water, probably leaking into basements, God knows what, but that can't be very good for the safety of these properties. Something's got to be done. And, and that's why today when they together. build in those locations, they don't allow them to build basements and they allow they them to They shouldn't be allowed to build Well, that's that not how it goes, Mrs. Wolfley. Anyway. That's well, not how it goes. Well, that's why FEMA has Mr. results that Mr. ask Chairman, for these buildings Rick. to be built on, um, on um, stilts. That's why it goes that's that ridiculous way. Regina? Too. Regina is looking to be recognized. I recognized her, Mrs. Wolfley. <laughs> No, but I just thought of something. Can I say it? Yeah, sure. All right, we're talking about this, and Senator Stiles is still there, and I want to thank her for her report. But also, you know, we're in <clears> process <throat> of trying to get the master plan approved for mm -hmm. town meeting, and I think this all this needs to be incorporated into yeah. that yeah. because we st there's flooding for very <clears throat> different reasons in all areas of the town, and I know that NECN has some horrific pictures up there, yeah. but I also talked to residents yesterday by phone, and there are people that have lived down that beach for 40, 50 years, and they said the flooding was bad, but they've seen much worse. So, yeah. you know, yeah. like Rick says, I don't think yesterday it really had to do with the tides. I think it had to do with probably all the snow and the levels of the water in the rivers and the marsh. And so it really I wasn't... that all this, like planning board, zoning board, board of selectmen, can incorporate all this into the master plan and use it as a selling point to get a real master plan going for the whole town. Yeah. I know the Hampton Beach Area Commission has their portion of it, but this is happening in all parts of the town and for different reasons. So I think that, um, you know, where we have an opportunity to really address it and put it in our master plan as opposed to just, you know, reacting to it's flooded down there. Yeah. My whole existence in this town is that, flooded. Yeah. That, that was by people that have lived here that yeah. the flooding, although bad this weekend, they've seen worse. Yeah, in reality, so. it's been my, this is much better year than it's been in previous years. And Chair, right. I agree, definitely. Yeah. Chairman Barnes, uh, that's the very reason why the commission decided to 
uh, just have a voice on that uh, study committee mm -hmm. rather than try to work a different page. I mean, yep. if, you, if you've got five groups working in different areas, it accomplishes nothing, where if you can get the voices right. together, you can do a lot more. So yeah, and the thing yeah. is, part of the um, funding for that master plan did come from uh, a group that is concerned with the flooding. That's where the funding came from. That's correct. For the whole master plan. That's, that's correct. Yes, and that's why I have been sitting there, and that's why Chuck Rage is supposed to be sitting there yeah. now. And, and that's why we had the report from them first, and that was one of the reasons we decided, well, they've got a grant working with the town. Let's yeah. just kind of mm -hmm. work that process instead. Yeah. yeah. Thank Any you, other Nancy. questions? Thank you for coming in this evening. You're welcome, Thank and you. I will give you these. Next, we have Christy you, coming up to the table for monthly financials and default budget. Good evening, guys. Yeah, I almost Enjoy. forgot Regina was there. <laughs> Good evening, Christy. Good evening. All right, so you guys all should have received your November financials on either Thursday or Friday, and they are on the town's website. We'll just run through them with you guys real quick. It's hard to believe the year's almost over. <laughs> All right, so it's the 11th report. The target is 91.67%. The um, total income for the month was $805,896. We're still above the 2018 revenue um, at this point. Motor vehicles came in at $332,099. Payment in lieu of taxes at 120000 that's the next era. Interest on taxes at 4371 Building permits at $19,204. Stormwater pollution at $93,546. Highway subsidy at $97,053. Departmental income at 51893 Parking lots at 4064 They are officially closed now. Interest on deposits at $15,039. District court fines at $3,509. And the real estate trust at $61,730. On the expense side, at, at the end of November, we were 87.42% spent or under budget by $1,070,485. I can tell you that as of today, we are under budget by $691,000. So um, I ran some number, just some preliminary December numbers with the first two weeks, and that snowstorm for those two and a half days or whatever hit the budget there. Um, general government is at 89.05%. The police department is at 87.13%. Fire department is at 90.47%. The building department is at 83.5%. Public works is at 81.86%. Parks and recreation is at 81.93%. The library is at 92.31%. I was talking to Amanda this morning though and that's because their uh, fourth quarter appropriation has already been paid. So they will come in um, within their budget. Fund 24, the recreation fund has a balance of $235,586. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $266,436. Fund 26, Private Detail, has a balance of $280,579. EMS Fund has a balance of $328,615. And the Wastewater System Development Charge um, has a balance of $257,001. <laughs> with $74,886 being collected in 2019. And the board does have expenditures approved in that account of 229398 So that brings that fund down to um, right around 30000 once those expenditures have been made. And that is uh, November for you. Okay. Regina. Oh, yeah, yeah thanks, we'll, Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll thanks. start with you so we don't forget. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay. I know I'm not. I'm physically not there, Christy. So w I'm sorry. I could barely hear you when you said you reran the numbers after that. Could you say what's left as of today or the last time you checked it? 
Uh, yeah, through last week's uh, payroll and accounts payable and all that, we're at 691000 under budget. And what percent of the budget is spent then? I'm sorry? So the percent of the budget that is spent is... Is higher. Like I didn't do the, the percentage. In November, we spent 84.7%. Yes. That was like a million something. Mm -hmm. I didn't so do the percentage. now we have 600 something thousand left. Yes, 691000 Okay, and then as far as the Warren articles, at the end of 9.30, we only had spent 51.2%. Has that changed since November 30th? Uh, let's see. For Warren articles, yeah, that has a... Uh, there's been a lot of expenditures on the Warren articles. They are... Uh, well, they're 51.24%. Um, yeah, that's spent. what I had, 51.24 yep. yep. as so of 9.30. Uh, 11.30, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I didn't look at it as of December, sorry. I don't have that in front of me. Okay, all right, so as far as we know right now, it's still the 51 as of 1130. Yeah. And then obviously we know at the end of the year, whatever we have left over in the budget will go to the unassigned fund balance. Yes, along with anything that we may have collected in revenues above and beyond what our estimated revenues were when we set the tax rate. Mm -hmm. right. And I don't have that figure okay. on the top of my head. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for your excellent support, report as usual. Rusty? No, nope, she always does a great report. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, a, a good report, and I just wanted to say a couple of things. Number one, when people were talking about their taxes and stuff this year, somebody on social media said they would love to see where the money's spent. Now, anybody can go on to the town website, and you have the every month you have all of the finances there, right? So anybody could look and see how every penny in town is spent. Exactly. Exactly, so it's very transparent. Both revenue and expenditures. The whole entire report that you guys receive is the whole, in its entirety is posted on the website. Right, yeah. so anybody could see how exactly how the money is spent in town. Yes. Good, and the other thing is when we talk about revenue being up, do you have any idea how much revenue will be up at the end of the year? I mean, can you project that at all? Um, I can. I did not do that for tonight. Um, I can tell you, though, if you look at page four of the revenue report, you'll see, if you look at the adjusted column, um, when we did the, when we set the tax rate, I had projected revenues being $8,650,157. And right now, at the end of November, we were seven million four hundred thirty-nine thousand one hundred and eighty-three dollars. And we have to take into consideration that we did not receive room, rooms and meals yet. However, when we set the tax rate, um, the Department of Revenue does tell us what the they um, believe the rooms and meals will come in. So that is included in that uh, eight point six five million. So we. I'm comfortable that we will come in at least at that 8.65, probably slightly over. We try and get the revenues as accurate as we possibly can when we set the taxes so that there's not a lot of extra revenue because revenues are a little easier to predict than snowstorms. Right, right. And stuff like that. Good, excellent. And, and see, foreseeing no disasters or anything or big storms or stuff, we should, expenditures should come in. Within the budget, Within yes. the budget at the end of the year? Yes, I believe so. Very good. Thank you very much. You do a good job of presenting that. Thank you. And I think it's important to remember the people when they go on and look to see where the money's being spent, remember that the bigger part of the uh, taxpayers voted to spend that money. Right. Mrs. Wolseley. Now, thank you, Christy. Nice You're job. Welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. No questions? No. Nope. Okay, so, so then I have the, the um, default budget. Yeah, the default budget for 2020. I know we discussed it when I was here before, um, but the budget committee has uh, finalized their review of the budget, and we have the health insurance numbers and all that. So now we have the exact default budget number. So I was talking to Fred, and we thought that the board may wish to vote on that default number now that the budget committee has voted on their budget. Number so I can start working on all of our DRA forms and have everything ready for like the public hearing and stuff. Um, the default budget is a little bit higher than it was when I was here before related to health insurance and uh, pay increases that were given by the library trustees to the library 
individuals that were not um, put into the default, but they belong in the default because they were given in the 2019 calendar year. So the default number now is 28 million. Three hundred and sixty-eight thousand three hundred and eighty-four dollars, and we did discuss um, the increase in the default at the budget committee. So now, the default budget for 2020 is twelve thousand six hundred and ninety-nine dollars higher than the 2020 proposed budget that the budget committee will be putting forward um, on the Warren article. Okay. So we're still under the default, I guess, is the mm -hmm. long and short of it. Mrs. Wolseley? No, that's fine. Thank you, Chris. Jim? Yeah, I hate to ask this question because it might be too, too detailed. Uh, but can you just, could you briefly explain what the difference between the default, default budget and the budget? The budget comes from budget committee, right? Yes. And the default budget? The default budget comes from the current year expenditures, plus or minus any items that have been passed through town meetings such as collective bargaining agreements with wage increases, um, health insurance, anything that's under, I don't want to say a multi-year contract because you can no longer include those increases, but through things that have been voted on by the voters. So mostly driven by like collective bargaining agreements and benefits that are in employees' contracts and stuff. And the default budget comes into effect when? If, if the budget is, if the budget article is to fail, the budget that's being proposed is to fail, then the default budget would go into place. Good. Thank you very much. All set. Thanks. Done Regina, did you have questions on the default budget? I'm good. Thank you, Christy. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, do we need a motion for that? Fred, should yes. they vote on that yeah. so that we can? Yes. Yes. I'll make a motion that we accept the default budget as uh, explained. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Unanimous. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank Thanks. you. Get ready for the storm. <laughs> um, next, we have Craig Musselman, consultant, and Jamie <coughs> Sullivan, deputy town manager. And Chris Jacobs, too. Has Chris Jacobs. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Pardon me. I'd like to introduce you to Craig Musselman. He's a, an engineer who has uh, been contracted by the town to help us as we developed our RFPs for solid waste and recycling, and um, as you all know, those contracts are expiring uh, midway through next year. We had to go through the process at your direction to put out uh, uh, requests for proposals. Craig joined the team, <coughs> pardon me, and helped us develop those. He's here tonight to talk about we've, we've received them back and to give you an overview of what they look like. So I'll turn it over to Craig to start with that, and then we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, thank you. I'm with CMA Engineers of, of Portsmouth. Um, I'm an environmental engineer, and I've been practicing in New Hampshire for 40-some years. Uh, and a lot of that has been representing municipalities throughout the state on solid waste projects of various sorts. Um, I also uh, served as a selectman in Rye for 12 years until my last sentence was up. <laughs> um, and my wife told me I had to move out of the house if I ran again, so I, uh, I don't do that anymore, but I did uh, until a year or two ago. Uh, so I know what you do, and I know your process. Um, this is the beginning of a discussion on what to do next with, with uh, a couple of these, and it is a little bit complicated tonight. What we're presenting are the facts from what we saw back from mm -hmm. the bids. Yeah. Um, the, the upshot is that costs for both solid waste disposal and uh, single stream uh, recyclables processing is going up. Yeah. It's going to have a budget impact. We have three contracts, hauling, solid waste, and recyclables that expire July 1. And we have one contract for managing construction demolition debris that expires in early January. So uh, on, the, on the, the, the three contracts, we have time. Uh, the bids have come in. Uh, there are questions on several of them. We are not in a position, and it's not in the town's interest, uh, to be in a position to select vendors and select specific direction yet because there are a lot of questions that need to be answered regarding uh, each of these proposals, and I'll, I'll touch on, on, on some of those. 
Uh, the bids are good for 180 days. Uh, we so we have until early June, um, and it is in the town's interest to um, confirm and likely negotiate some of the provisions of these various proposals, talking to several of the vendors who have proposed, uh, in order to make a decision that's in the best interest of the town. Um, the, the, the bids are summarized in what we call a bid tabulation summary, which is the, the fourth page of the handout, the first one with the sideways uh, table. Um, and we uh, received uh, hauling proposals for hauling of both solid waste and recyclables to each of the, the locations that uh, we suspected might bid for processing of recyclables and for disposal of solid waste. Um, here we have a uh, relatively uh, straightforward uh, situation where we received two proposals. The clear low cost proposal is Commonwealth Waste Transportation, which is the firm that's been hauling the materials for the last five years and has done so reliably in Hampton. Um, there are questions regarding some specifics of their proposal uh, that we will need to confirm um, and uh, some other things uh, that, they, that, that they've offered after the bid for, for hauling to different locations that, that came in for bid. So uh, although that's relatively straightforward, uh, the decision and selection is a, is a topic for another day. Uh, it will be relatively easily resolved. The second set of proposals is for solid waste disposal. Currently, your solid waste is disposed at the turnkey landfill in Rochester. Mm -hmm. We received two proposals for solid waste disposal, $62 a ton from Casella, but it's in Bethlehem, New Hampshire, which is more costly to haul to, and $77.50 per ton from Waste Management of New Hampshire. We did not receive proposals from three waste to energy facilities that we had uh, communicated with uh, uh, with respect to the, the, the town's RFP. Um, that's not terribly surprising. The two waste to energy facilities in Massachusetts have been bidding in the 80s and 90s for waste in, in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And the waste to energy facilities um, need more waste in the winter when the waste quantities are down and less waste in the summer when everybody else's waste is up. And you're not that. Uh, you're, you're, you're the opposite of that. Um, that, that may have uh, played into that as well. Had they proposed, I suspected that they, I suspect they would have been very high proposals. Um, when you take into account hauling, uh, which when the, a selection and a decision uh, gets made uh, down the road, um, these two, despite the differences in the tipping fees, are very close in terms of combined hauling and disposal costs. Their waste management looks to be a dollar or two lower uh, than disposing at the landfill up in Bethlehem. Uh, but waste management's proposal has a variety of legal exceptions that they've taken to the uh, town's RFP, and our RFP was relatively tight. Mm -hmm. The areas that they've objected to are not uncommon in the industry for people to object to. What they've suggested is pretty much on their side at this point. Uh, there are discussions that need to be had on what uh, <coughs> middle ground might be able to be struck on that. Uh, to determine who might be a successful proposer on solid waste. But we do have the data on um, uh, solid waste disposal prices and, and, and what they are uh, at the current time. Um, that is higher than what you've been paying. You've been in the high 60s. It's now in the mid to high 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that, has, that has gone up. The third one is for construction demolition uh, debris. Um, and that has been for the last year under a contract with 
re-energy where they supply a trailer at your transfer station. The rest of the equipment there is Town of Hampton equipment. The C and D trailer is provided by the vendor and they haul construction demolition debris to their uh, recycling facility in Epping, New Hampshire. Um, they have proposed um, a hauling cost and a disposal cost that are slightly higher uh, than where you've been, but they are reasonable. Um, they've provided good service um, and they are, um, their contract ends January 10th. So that's the one decision that needs to be made relatively soon so that you can continue uh, that service seamlessly. There was one other bid and that was at $65 a ton, mm. again, at the landfill up in Bethlehem by Casella, uh. Uh, but they did not bid the hauling. <laughs> uh, so that is an unresponsive bid. Uh, if you look at uh, hauling costs otherwise and the cost of them maintaining a trailer, which they would have to do, uh, the net of that would be more than the, than the re-energy proposal anyway. So. That one is relatively straightforward. That's the one that needs to be dealt with pretty soon. The long story here and the, 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 the difficult decision making uh, down the road uh, has to do with single stream recyclables. Um, that world has changed. Um, and it has changed for two factors. First, if you look at the last page of your handout, mm -hmm. there is a graph yeah. which shows what has happened um, in the last three years to the revenue that they receive on the back end of the plant uh, from once they separate out all the recyclables and sell them, transport them to market, uh, uh, receiving revenue. They also pay cost. Uh, for residue disposal, the material that can't be recycled, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and for, in recent years, disposal of glass, which has a cost and not yes. a revenue yes. attached to it. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, but beginning in late 2017 and into 2018, um, the revenue from, on the, from the back end of these plants fell apart. It, it, it yeah. went from an average of about in the 60s to 70s per ton that they were receiving. Yeah. It's now between 10 and mm -hmm. $17 a ton. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's only one of their problems. The other problem is contamination. Yeah. And um, the, they were expecting somewhere between 5 and 10% uh, contaminants, they were, their economics looked good if the contaminants were 5%. Um, Hampton's contamination through its audits last year averaged 20%. Mm -hmm. uh, some loads were 50% and more. Um, um, so contamination uh, differently with year-round residents than at the beach where everyone comes in in a yeah, week so, or two yeah. uh, turnover, yeah. um, it, it's, it's quite a significant uh, challenge. So that has affected them on the back end because they're taking more and more trash in with recyclables yeah. and they're having to pay $80 a ton yeah. or more to get rid of that. They're saying $225 a yeah. ton uh, to separate it out and to, and to dispose of it in, in a landfill. Um, between those two things, the world has changed. Five years ago, you had a proposal from the facility in Billerica where you, your recyclables are processed uh, now for zero dollars a ton. We'll take it and process it for free because they were getting the revenue on the back end and they didn't expect so much uh, trash in with the recyclables. Um, in 2018, when the market fell apart, Actually, what they had the ability to deal with in your contract was that your contract said 5% contaminants. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the town and others had to start paying for the contaminants. Yeah. The net was that in the last year or so, you've been paying 
30 to $40 a ton to process the recyclables. We now have, back to the, the previous page, we now have four proposals, um, one from Waste Management Billerica, one from Casella in Charlestown, Mass., one from Eco Maine, which is a publicly owned facility in Portland, and one from Greenworks, a facility on Route 1 in Peabody, which you probably see when you drive down uh, Route 1 to Boston. It's on the left, big uh, Greenworks facility. Um, these four proposals are apples and oranges. The upshot is that the cost is going up substantially. Um, they are all addressing, all four of them, the same set of economic issues. Um, and what, what, is, what is happening in the market is that processing single stream recyclables is going from where it was zero to $40 a ton, let's say, it's going into the low hundreds mm -hmm. uh, per ton. And that cost goes up as your recyclables are more and more contaminated. These proposals are apples and oranges because they differ in terms of what risk you assume, what benefits you assume if the market comes back and, 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 and they start to receive uh, more revenue. And the first two proposals have, and the, what, what generally other than the, the low amount of revenue currently, what sets the net cost of it is there what, we, what, what we've called here a base processing fee, which varies with the level of contaminants. Two of the proposers said, this is the base processing fee, but if anything happens <laughs> that impacts our cost of operating the facility, yeah. we will let you know and your cost will go up. <laughs> Uh, they probably wouldn't agree with my characterization in that way, but it's, it's close to that. It's yeah. very broadly defined yeah. in terms of what could happen that would allow, um, that, that would increase their operating cost and it would go up. Uh, the other two proposals fix their operating cost and, and they vary with how you share revenue. Uh, the Greenworks proposal does not share revenue but has a fixed cost and it's fixed regardless of contamination rate up to a very high level. Uh -huh. um, there are questions in three of them as to what their contract provisions are, and there are discussions with at least three of these outfits that are needed to, to confirm exactly what they mean by the words in the proposal to confirm that that's their bottom line. Uh, and to evaluate on behalf of the town um, what, the, what the costs are, what the benefits are, so that you can make a decision as to how to process recyclables uh, going forward. We did solicit proposals for allowing the town new flexibility that you have not had in the past um, to collect delivered to the transfer station clean glass separately such that it doesn't go off mm -hmm. in the recyclable stream such that you're not paying over a hundred dollars a ton for it yeah. it has to be very very clean less than 0 0.5 mm -hmm. uh, percent contaminants but there is flexibility to do that with several of the three of the proposals and there's also flexibility for businesses to deliver clean cardboard and to have that Mm -hmm. uh, processed outside of the single stream um, uh, uh, process uh, for a, a, an equation that two of the proposals proposers have uh, have given the town. These are um, this is described earlier as being hot off the presses. Bids came in um, last Friday, last Thursday, week ago Thursday. We the town staff met. Uh, Thursday to to uh, characterize this um, odd set of circumstances that we have in terms of evaluating these proposals, confirming what they are as a bottom line, and being able to make a recommendation on 
a direction in which the town should proceed. So this is the first step. Um, the town needs to deal with, by early January, a new contract for CD, construction demolition debris disposal. And then later in the spring, I would say March and April, there will be time to have the discussions that need to be had uh, with multiple proposers and to uh, come back with a recommendation as to what would be in the best interest of the town of Hampton. Why don't we go to questions about the presentation and then we'll okay. go into the next phase if Mrs. you Mrs. Wolsey, you're a brave man. You probably should go back to Rye with all, all this mess. Um, construction and demolition, why can we not have the name of a company or companies to refer people to? If I'm going to have my house knocked down, why can't Public Works say, well, you can contact ABC or DEF and get it out of Public Works completely? You, you, you can, and quite frankly, most communities do. Ah. Most, most communities have a line that's drawn. Yes. that above a certain yes. quantity yes. Uh, delivered in a certain vehicle, it's got to go straight into the private sector and, yeah. and the municipality doesn't deal with it. Mm -hmm. But for the person who does a small job on their own house mm -hmm. and has a very small quantity of material to get rid of, that's very costly to deal with that in the private sector and usually for very small quantity C and D, you have that collected separately. You try to keep that quantity down as much as you can. Well, are you, do you, can you have a poundage limit or a, a we, we do. We have some limits on what can come in and what a pricing structure is. I mean, is if I that. tear my porch down and replace it. So if it comes in a basement, pick up truck and you can pick it up yes. and, and throw it in the trailer yeah that's really the limit yeah. we have had a Good. number of people call to say listen I demoed a whole camp or yeah something of that size we don't want to handle it twice Good. can we go right up to re-energy or the yeah. Norco facility and I think I call I uh, describe the truck they give us a yeah let them come ahead and then uh, they go there directly so you charge by weight for a small if I demo my porch you charge by weight for what I bring over in my pickup truck. Right. Okay. So then we don't really have to worry about. You're paying for it. They are paying for it. Yeah. And it's provided as a service. There's right. no reason why taxpayers should have to pay. They pretty much don't. For people right. taking their pretty houses apart. Don't. Okay. Number two, um, I prefer to see trash to ash. And I know you are not. You don't seem to feel that we have someone really close by to do that. But I would rather see the trash to ash and produce energy from that. Um, the Those next groups just decided not to bid on our, on our proposal, so we don't right. have that to consider. But that's <coughs> something I'm hoping at yeah, least in, in the In these future, contracts, they haven't, yeah. At yeah. least in the future, we can do that. Um, I want to see, quite frankly, the commercial waste picked up of the town discarded. I don't think we should be picking up any commercial waste out of the taxpayers' pockets. We have uh, businesses in this community like Hannaford, uh, like, Hannaf uh, like uh, uh, the Galley Hatch, who have always disposed of their own waste. They have trailers on their property and they pay while they are also paying for the other businesses in town under their taxes. I don't think that's fair. I would like to see individuals uh, go ahead and commercial businesses and then they can worry about whether they sort out their bottles or whether they do the beer bottles, whether they're getting contaminated waste or sure. something. I don't want to deal with that. As so I would offer to that is that that's a policy decision for the yes. board. As you recall, <clears throat> pardon me, the trash committee that you folks authorized gave certain recommendations, and one of them is we're going to be working with a consultant to help formulate plans for you to consider for all of those items. I would, I would encourage us to try and stay focused on questions regarding this stuff for the numbers 
and we deal with that policy issue as that comes later. That's what I I'm suggest. Afraid. What about for warrant articles and for this year? We can get to that after we get through this. Okay. That's what I thought. Is we'll yeah, go through that. We're very all thing. expecting warrant articles. Yeah, that understood. Was part of why we uh, yeah. started that whole. Yeah, committee. understood. I have one one more here. I don't want to keep pushing this off, and pushing it off, and pushing it off. My last comment is the state of New Hampshire and the state park. Let them get rid of their own waste, which they do in every other state park in New Hampshire. No other community in New Hampshire that has a state park on its premises handles that waste. It should be up to the state of New Hampshire. I'm fed up with the state, and as far as I'm concerned, they should be told we will no longer handle their trash. The Public Works Department is overwhelmed. So I'm thinking of this from a money standpoint and also for our Public Works Department, which is overwhelmed. It's just too much. We're going to have to do something, and I don't want to see it pushed down the road. Yeah, nice point, presentation, though. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Say what you were going to say. No, I was going to say, on that yeah, point, we've we're said this before. That, that, anyway. that, yeah, that, that, again, a policy decision, but as we pointed out previously, yes. there are benefits to the state involvement we have as well that saves us a great deal of money. They pay for all of the trash that we pick up, and their people pick up trash but, that our folks... We would be paying overtime or new employees to do pickup of trash that they do for us. All I'm saying is I, I appreciate your position. I understand your position. But factually, there's other elements involved in that that need to be considered but as well. And we but will the trash them. they're picking up is trash from the businesses. Not, they not, around not entirely. Up residential trash. No, no, not entirely. They go around and pick up everything that folks leave okay. along the front. This is not what we're talking about it's anyway. Still a state we just again, leave it for issue. now, Mrs. Wolf. It's still a state park. Leave it for now because it's not part of this conversation. Well, Mr. I think Waddell. it is. Thank you. Me meetings would go a lot quicker if we stuck to the points that we have on our agenda and just dealt with that. But very good. <laughs> and I talked with Mr. Sullivan about this. He explained a lot of the uh, details, <clears throat> and I didn't understand any of it. <laughs> with all the uh, complications and stuff. So I agree 100% that we've got to look at this, we've got to look at these bids, we've got to take our time on this part of it right. and do it correctly so that we get it done correctly in the, in the uh, long run. Uh, but good job, and it's too bad that everything wasn't just straightforward anymore, but it's not. It's not. It's not. It used to be a dollar per ton, and you could just list <laughs> five numbers. <laughs> Regina. Regina? Yeah, Rex, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I just have a question. We're talking about right now about four bids to to perhaps replace the current contracts that we have with waste management. Yes. That's correct. That's yeah. all we're talking about right yeah. now. So these bid proposals are based on our current policies that we have as a town. That's yes. correct. So we're looking ideally, I mean, I don't, I apologize, I don't have the package in front of me, so I'm just taking this all based on what I'm hearing, but I'm assuming that we're going to be looking for something that is cheaper and more <laughs> economical than the current waste management contracts that we have. Well, is there a bid like that that exists in that, those four? No. There is no. not. The, as the bids came in, and waste management is one of the bidders on, mm -hmm. on, on two of these uh, services, um, they are all, all the proposals Proposals are more costly than what you oh, have had for the yes. last five years. Yes. And that's, okay, so it would, have, yeah. it would seem to me, I, like I said, I haven't looked at them, that in order to actually reduce expense to the town and the budget, that we would have to somehow, you know, amend our current policies and procedures. Yes, and what that's that, what we were expecting. What that will include, we don't know yet, but that is going to be really what it's going to take to start realizing any type of saving as yeah. far as picking up trash. We're going to be looking for something to happen now instead of kicking the can down the road further because now's the time. We haven't paid attention to it in the past, and now the prices are going up. So we do okay. have to do something to make some changes. All right, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that that is like the only thing we're talking about right now. It is. It's the bids that we've received. Yeah. Correct. So, okay. Rusty? So, <clears throat> seeing the, the four bids we have, and, and you're right, nothing's any cheaper than the, it's been in the past. Correct. Um, and let's try to stay on topic. Should we, should we talk about C&D tonight, about that contract? I, I think 
Our suggestion would be we hold off on that until after the first of the year. Let us look at the whole picture. You'll well, have another meeting before we have to do that. Fred, you agree with that? Yes. So okay. We have some warrant articles before you, and, and in the next phase, we'll talk about what we project the costs to be. That's something we can't put off. We need to deal with in our budget right, before right. the 14th. We need to deal with that issue of mm. how much we're going to put in to kind of prepare for these costs. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so where do we go from here, Fred? <laughs> That's well, the question of the year. I don't think we're really going really anywhere at this point. We're still analyzing the figures. We're trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, one of the things that we need to do, and I think Jamie just said it a few seconds ago, is that we need to provide for the differential, the worst possible case situation of the bidders that are closest to what we need, uh, and we need to appropriate that money. Now, we have to do that. We've only got two more meetings before the budget and the uh, Which the meetings are you talking the about? The 6th and the 13th of January. The, the warrant closes on the 14th of January. So the next two meetings, we're going to have to solve these two problems as far as the appropriations concerned, because <clears throat> that's what's going to roll us forward <clears throat> Excuse me, into next year and get next year paid for. Uh, we can worry about the terms and conditions, you know, up until sometime in early May. So we have negotiating room. We just need the money on the table so we have the right to negotiate. Mm. Okay. And what would you like to say, Jamie? No, I, I agree with Fred. What, what we're dealing with now, what we, we know from the presentation what our future can look like, what the costs are, if we stay with the exact same policies, and that's what we're planning right yeah. now. Based on our history, we've made projections and we're finalizing those to present to you what we think the costs will be. The next phase is... What policy do you folks want to deal with? We had <coughs> part of the, the, the trash committee, as you recall, we came in be, before to see you. We had a series of recommendations. In the Warren articles before you, deals with each of those recommendations that the committee came out with, with the exception of one. Um, and then the policy issue that you are advocating for is wanting a paper throw uh, or that version of a paper. Or something different. Right, right. <coughs> Remember. I, I would say the biggest thing is uh, doing what the whole board has wanted to do right down the road and limit the amount of barrels. Why that hasn't happened, I don't know. If we but it's deal been with a mistake, and now we're paying the price. So, so the policy issues that we came out of there with, as you recall, the last time we discussed the results of that, was to, you gave us direction to go ahead and work with Waste Zero, one of the subject matter experts, consultants that came to us, to negotiate a contract with them and work with them to develop programs to help us deal with our costs. We're doing that, all right? We've got that proposal. We're ready to sign that now, set a purchase order for it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's going to happen after the first of the year. It's going to take time. The proposal is it's a 12-week period of data collection to come back and formulate yeah. what this town needs and wants for whether it be revenue generation, policy change, whatever we can do, whatever you as a board of selectmen in charge of this, decide to implement. And that's where we're moving with it. So before you tonight with Fred's list, you'll get to in a little bit, are those warrant articles we have, what we don't have right now tonight? We have some estimates, uh, legal and finance. We're working out what we think the cost impact of the proposals that you've just gone over, what they'll be. And again, it's going to be substantial in next year's right. budget. We're going to need a warrant article for that. Fred and I have already had discussions of how we'll recommend to you is taking that out of our undesignated uh, fund balance as a part of this to fund those costs. Mm -hmm. But it's clear we need to do work to reduce our tonnage. All those conversations that we have had, we've got to we've got to capitalize on those. I think the taxpayers need um, uh, need to know some of these answers before they're expected to vote on any of these Warren articles that mm -hmm. we've been discussing for weeks. Well, I'll be clear with you. The timetable between now and the 14th, you're not going to, unless the board decides to institute a policy between now and then. Well, you're that not was the idea when we asked for that committee to happen, was that we would come up with some answers and do something. The, board, the can has been kicked down the road and kicked down the road, mm -hmm. and now this is happening. The people that are out to lose here are the residents of the town of Hampton. Yes. So, and thank you, Mr. Musselman, is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, you have a great way of communicating, and I think you've caught everyone's attention. Thank you. People have told me in the past I have a, both a great voice and face for Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
If there's no other questions, Mr. Musselman, we can thank him for his time, and I'll be happy to get on to the other business you have with okay, me. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Thank Musselman. You so Appreciate it. I'm sure we'll see you again, <laughs> hopefully. So what is it you'd like to touch on next with me? You want to go on to the collective bargaining issues? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, so you folks all received in your packets um, copies of the tentative agreements we've worked out with the fire folks. Yeah. Um, as I'd be happy to go through each of those with you. Um, we'll put them up online once you approve them, hopefully today. Um, and I'll go through both of them. As you recall, it was with professional firefighters and the supervisory association. And essentially, on the overview on the cost items. No worries. We're going to be here for a minute. Do you mind? I don't mind at no. all. No. Okay. Jim, you call them up. All right. The guy for the for 907 Ocean Boulevard, that's quick, isn't it, Mark? Yes. And he's sitting there. He doesn't, I don't think he needs to sit through all this because he's been here for about three or four meetings. So can we keep, we're just going to do that, Absolutely. if you don't mind? I thought he came to be entertained. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he didn't. <laughs> Won't happen here. <laughs> <laughs> Do we so uh, as you had taken a vote last week to uh, authorize uh, some modifications, uh, one of which had to do with the kind of structure that could be on the, on the site uh, in order to change the wording of the uh, deed restriction that would, had been in place. Um, Subsequently, uh, Mr. Dufresne, the owner at 907, uh, got in touch with me and called to my attention a, a problem with the wording that the board had authorized. Um, I agree with him that it's a, a problem, and so uh, I have uh, suggested uh, amending the wording of the deed modification document signed last week. Um, I've run the the document that we, we would end up with. Uh, we hadn't recorded the last one. Uh, I ran the wording of the, of the uh, modified deed restriction uh, by Mr. Dufresne, and he uh, is satisfied with that. And so I have uh, prepared a motion for you. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Yeah, I just simply want to uh, uh, thank you again for hearing me, considering this modification. Um, it was problematic in the wording would not allow a single family home, which is something that's specifically desired and required in that zone. So I just simply ask that it be amended or modified so that it, it could is to include either a single family or a two family home. Right. All right, I hereby move to amend the wording of the deed modification document to record to change the first sentence that now reads, the only structures to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one, shall be one two-family dwelling containing no more than five bedrooms with no more than two-car garage so that said first sentence will now read, the structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one or two-family dwelling containing no more than five bedrooms with no more than two-car garage. And the only thing that was added in there was a one single-family dwelling, right? Right. And we took out the word the only structure. Right. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four and one against. Uh, I'm opposed. Yes, I, it's too much. Okay. Too much. Four to and one. There. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vita. Yeah. And I'll set these around. <coughs> Thank you for signing. Okay. Already. Yeah. And uh, do you want to continue? There. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so back to the collective bargaining agreements. As you know, there's two uh, contracts with the fire, <coughs> the firefighters and the supervisors. Um, these contracts, the cost items are the three-year contracts, tentative agreements, uh, calling for 2.8, 2.8, 2.8 over each of the three years. Within the supervisor's contract, there are two salary adjustments, one to the deputy chief's salary, one to the fire prevention secretary's salary that will be in the first year slightly higher than the 2.8, but those individuals will receive that adjustment only and not the, the COLA. In subsequent years, they will uh, receive the COLA. We've made some adjustments in the uniform um, language. Uh, we've tightened up 
uh, certain language issues that are not really cost items, but tightened up some language issues there. And we did add, as a part of uh, the uniform, that upon completion of the probationary <coughs> period, the town will supply a Class A uniform. That's the dress uniform you'll, you'll see the firefighters wear at various events, um, that we will supply a Class A uniform to uh, the firefighters upon completion of probation and uh, the officers when they get promoted with appropriate insignia. Um, we've also added to the firefighters contract a stipend, a longevity stipend for when they achieve the 20th year, their contract expires on their steps at 18 years. Um, we'll put a stipend we've agreed to of uh, $1,250 uh, for the 20th year and beyond. It's paid as an annual stipend. It's not a salary adjustment. It's not a COLA that goes on the base pay. Um, and in addition, there's a section in there that uh, deals with the education incentives. Um, and there was a request and we've agreed to change. Uh, previously, there was a requirement that if you had a bachelor's degree, it had to be in a job-related field. And there's been some confusion about what that is. Uh, we've agreed to say that it's job-related if they have an associate's degree or it's uh, acceptable for any associate's degree, any four-year degree from accredited un college or university or above. We have several. Uh, one individual has a law degree, um, all of which we see as beneficial, and we agree that that will allow them to achieve a, you know, if they have the bachelor degree, they can achieve a, a firefighter specialist rank uh, that they have already in their contract existing. Other than that, there are no other cost items. It's all language changes to clean up items. We're dealing with the uh, U.S. Supreme Court decision in Janus, a labor issue. All language, not cost item. We're cleaning up some outdated old language, removing certain sections, updating sections. But again, none of those are cost items. Um, and none of those are, are issues that we have any concern about. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board has. Jim. Oh, and I'll, I'll make a statement because um, I was in on the negotiations with this. First of all, that we have an extremely uh, experienced and, and well-run fire department. And number two, that the negotiations, I've been in a lot of negotiations in Massachusetts when I lived there, and a lot of times two groups come in and they're adversaries right away. And that was not the case here. Both groups came in with realistic goals and realistic uh, things that they wanted to get passed, and they worked very cooperatively to get it done. So I think that this is a good contract for the firemen, and I think it's a good contract for the, uh, for the town. I think it was well negotiated by, by the firemen and by uh, Sol Mr. Sullivan and, and Mark. Mrs. Wolseley? It, it, I appreciate that this is very concise. It's not rambling all over. This is the most, I think, focused, concise uh, agreement that I have seen in all these years. The, the, it gets right to the point. Under Article 27, where it says uniform allowance for the um, uh, firefighter, uh, what, the officers, mm -hmm. um, protective clothing damaged during emergency operations or training will be replaced by the town in a reasonable period of time. What, what's a reasonable period of time? That's the language that's been existing for many years. Um, and it's but you put new language this time. You put new contracts this time. Well, we adjusted those items that we discussed. And what I would say to you is that's been there for a long time, and it's never been an issue. If, oh, if, okay. if, if, if the equipment's damaged, it gets replaced. Okay. It's not Just the racist concern. Just out at me. Yes, I thought I'd ask. And then <laughs> it says, it is expressly understood that the chief or the chief's designee shall buy only top quality protective clothing and that factory seconds shall not be purchased or issued to a member covered by this agreement. I like the specificity of that. And then going over onto the firefighter section, I had a couple of, here it is, Article 26 Uniform Allowance. Uh, at the bottom, protective clothing damaged during emergency operations or training will be replaced by the town in a reasonable period of time. Mm -hmm. Same question. What's a reasonable period of time? Same answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same answer. It's never been an issue. What, what you're reading, Mrs. Woolsey, is, as you recall... I haven't that, memorized all the yes, prior contracts. So what this is, <laughs> this particular section you're reading, yeah. is as you recall, the firefighters, while well, we have two, two separate contracts, yeah. there's one bargaining unit that yes. oversees a representative. Yes. So that and the uniform allowance, uh, pardon me, the uniform listing, yep. 
what we've done is mirrored the language because it was in one contract and completely yeah. different in the offices. So yeah. what we did was just import that language. There's no change in what they get, how they get it, and what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. It's just we memorialized it in each of the contracts similarly. That's mm -hmm. all. I will say it's the easiest contract I have ever read. Um, You're only reading the tentative agreement. The contract <laughs> okay. is a little bit longer. It's here. a lot longer. Okay, <laughs> all right. I Don't disillusion me. Uh, section 3 it says new section. One class A dress uniform, cost, a coat, I'm sorry, long sleeve shirt, pants, hat, tie, shall be provided by the town to each member upon the completion of their probationary period. This is in addition to the uniform allowance. And that seems sensible. That's what I just talked about. It's, that's new language that we believe no. that a class A is a reasonable thing. It's, you know, it's beneficial to us as they go to ceremonies, go to, you mm -hmm. know, the 9 11 ceremonies, what have you. Now drop down on, I really did read this, you know. Mm -hmm. Drop down on Article 29 salary schedule. It says 20 year, um, 20 years of service. I Correct. Know. An annual stipend payment of $1,250 shall be paid in the first pay period of December. Um, does that mean every year from then on? Once yes, you hit 20 years, but it's not. I, I think just that, first on reading it, I'm not sure whether that's intended to be it is. every year. It I'm is. not going to complain, but I, I was just questioning. That was the, the new language. language we talked about previously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, in section three at the end, and the associate's degree, et cetera, mm -hmm. any member covered by this agreement hired on or before April 1st, 1990? Holding an associate's or bachelor's degree related or not shall be put in this class. I'm a so, little surprised going back to 1990. That's old language that's he been in there. At me. Yeah, that's old language you did it. that's been in there. That's okay. been there for some time. And as we clean up, what I gave you was the paragraph that that new language in bold was added to. Any firefighter and with a bachelor's that'll, degree. That's an example yeah. right there of, of clean up language as we finalize this into the final contracts. Uh, uh, Mr. Carpentier is, is a very detailed uh, edit person, uh, my experience in the past. He's great. Uh, he's great to work with, but he's dynamite at finding old language like that. And we're, we're cleaning these contracts up as we go. Okay. I mean, I took my bachelor's degree in American history and literature, so, gee, I could, I could help do the contracts or something. We're good. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Carpentier's name is misspelled, please. We'll you have an that. I instead of an E. We'll fix so that. He'll correct his spelling down there. Uh, thank Regina. you. Regina. That was a good job and very concise. Very nice. Regina. Yeah, I yeah. just want. I just have a comment. Uh, thank you, uh, Jamie. For I know we talked right before I left and went over a few things, and it seems that this contract. I see it's two point eight percent increase for three years. That's similar to what we had with the police contract last town meeting, mm -hmm. and. I just sort of wanted to make a statement as far as the two, which I don't, I don't have a problem with the two point, I don't have a problem with the contract at all, the contract is presented at all. But I just want to make a note that, does anyone by chance know the average of the past three years or even going farther back for non-unions? Because I think what, you know, with the contracts, like I said, I don't have a problem with them. I don't have a problem moving them forward. But we do have to realize that you know, the union contracts, when they get passed at 2.8% or 3 3%, whatever it is, is a substantially higher yearly annual increase than non-unions. And, you know, we're going to, I think Jamie sort of pointed it out to me with a couple uh, deputies and directors how that, you know, the salary differential gets closer and closer when we get the contracts passed and the pay rate is higher as opposed to maybe like department heads who are non-union and they don't get as high increase on an annual basis. So I just wanted to point that out right now while we're talking about this. Like I said, I think the contracts are in great shape, but I just want the public to be aware because I know people are always getting mad at us for doing raises to non-unions, but at the same time, you know, when we have, I, I just want to point that differential out because I know this year I actually didn't vote on it, but I think the increase for non-unions was like 1.7%.
but something along that. So we have to make sure that we think about that so we can sort of catch everyone up. And I know the MRI study is sort of helping us do that. But I just wanted to point that out right now, and that's all I have to say. Rusty, thank you. No, I think they did a good job negotiating the contract. I think, you know, the, the past, past number of years, uh, you know, we haven't had to hire outside counsel for negotiations, and that's uh, that's done good for this town. It's, it's saved the town a number of dollars, and I also think it, uh, um, I think our deputy town manager it knows these contracts. He's had to deal with them long enough, and uh, he's done an excellent job along with Mark and, and Jim. They've done an excellent job, and I think uh, everything is good. Thank you. Thank you. So two actions I would ask you to, the board to take. One is um, to uh, vote to ratify and approve the tentative agreements, each of these. First ask for motion in that regard. I make a motion that we uh, accept and, and ratify both of those agreements. Second. All those it's, in favor? It's the easiest contract I've ever read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Regina? Aye. Okay, unanimous. So the next phase will be to approve the Warren article, which mm -hmm. includes the numbers, and, and you have those in your packets. I must uh, say I did not bring mine downstairs, so if I could steal one of yours, I could read them through, or you can approve them. Fred, do you have them right there? I don't believe I do. We've got so we need you to, to approve each of those Warren articles that are in the packets that I sent to each of you. Right here. I don't know. Here. If I may, um, how would you like to move forward these? Do you want me to read the entire article as I'd like you to do it? Yes. That'd be great. All right, so we'll start off yeah. with what is proposed currently as article number 17 um, for the professional firefighters, uh, uh, local 2664. That title will need to change, but it's, uh, shall the town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and with the Hampton Professional Firefighters Association, Local 2664 IAFF, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at current staffing levels over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year. Um, and it's, these are each as estimated increases over the previous year's level. In 2020, there are 39 weeks left uh, when it's approved. It'll be $87,623. In 2021, it is a full 52 weeks. 118,455. In 2022, another 52 weeks, 125, 166. And in 2023, there will be 13 weeks till the expiration, an additional 29,054. And to further raise and appropriate $87,623 for the fisc current fiscal year, such sum <coughs> representing the additional cost attributed to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at the current staffing levels. Majority vote required. Uh, this next phase is what is recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the vote tally from Municipal Budget Committee. And the final fiscal note reads, Fiscal Impact Note Finance Department estimated the 2020 tax impact on 87623 is .023 cents per 1,000 valuation, 2.3 cents per $1,000 of valuation. I would ask a motion to approve that language and move that forward to the Budget Committee and the Warrant. I'll make a motion to approve that Warrant and move it forward to the Budget okay. Committee. First and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Regina? Yeah, I said aye. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And yeah, the next article is currently listed as Article 18. It's the uh, Fire Department Supervisory Association. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost item included in the collective bargaining agreement reached be between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association affiliated with the Hampton Professional Firefighters Association, Local 2664 IAFF, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year? In two, uh, excuse me, in 2020, 39 weeks, uh, 31,742, let me fix a typo, 2021, 52 weeks at 38,398, 2022, 52 weeks, 37,769, and in 2023, 13 weeks, 9,499. <laughs> and further to raise and appropriate $31,742 for the current fiscal year, 
such sum representing the additional cost attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels. Majority vote required. Next section lists out the Board of Selectmen and Budget Committee's vote. The fiscal impact note from the Finance Department estimates the 2020 tax impact on $31,742 is .008 per $100,000 valuation, eight-tenths of one cent per thousand dollars of valuation. I move that we move that, uh, that we agree with that and move it to the Budget Committee. I'll second it. Yeah, I just have a question. Yeah. On these, on this leading the warrant article, when it says agreement reached between Hampton Board of Selectmen and Hampton Fire Department, is it supposed to be the Board of Selectmen or the Town of Hampton? That's the Board of Selectmen and the, the union, basically, is what's listed out there. It, this is the language we, con we use consistently, mm -hmm. and these agreements okay. are between the board and the unions, yeah. as approved by the town. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, on that first one, just yeah. for clarification, yeah. you, you seconded the first one? Yes. The article, yes. Nice job. Great job. Any other questions? No. I Excellent. think that's all you have for me on this. There's nothing further. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the period for the submission of warrant articles to amend the zoning ordinance is closed. Warrant articles for the annual town meeting may be submitted until January 14th, 2020. Those articles must be submitted to the Office of the Board of Selectmen. Those who are eligible for the various exemptions from property taxes should begin the process of completing applications with the town assessing department. This includes applications for the Hampton Beach Precinct Entertainment section of the district tax. Mr. Chairman, today the town received uh, for selectman action, and I've given each of you a copy of a Can communication from the State Department of Transportation regarding the continuation of a easement or an assignment uh, for our sewer pipe that runs under the former railroad bed and the fees that are associated with that. You will need to vote on that at your next meeting um, and, and instruct us as to whether or not you wish to keep the existing agreement, which was with the railroad, or you want to use the new state agreement. In either event, uh, you will find that the fees associated with that are going to increase. So, um, we also have, and I, it's be darned if I can find it. I've got so much paper here. Uh, we had a, a communication today from the state of New Hampshire with regards to the appointment of individuals to fill a particular committee, and I believe you have that information in your handout packets. I won't try to find it and discuss it tonight because it's something you're going to have to peruse and, and make a decision on, the board um, can appoint someone to be on the state commission, and I think you need to think about that. That's it, sir. Questions for the town manager's report. Mrs. Wolseley? Um, no, nothing. Regina? Yeah. So Warren articles can be submitted until January 14th. Fred, when is that next meeting going to be? January, we have the next two meetings are January 6th and January 13th. Ooh, ooh, but on the screen. Um, We're going to talk about that. We're yet to talk about that under, uh, under what? Old business. Old business. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Waddell? Uh, no, good report, Fred. And Thank Rusty you, stepped away. Yes, it's a good report. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, sir. Moving on to old business. Uh, uh, where did exactly. Rusty go? He went to the, the, the men's room. room. Yeah. Okay. Uh, think he first, will did I did you say something, Mrs. Wolseley? I said, where did you think he went? Is that, Here he's coming back. I there think, he is. Uh, I don't think those you say the comments are uh, well, that necessary. Well, a question, frankly. Well, Nothing no one asked you. Don't worry. Um, Rusty, um, I think we should bring up about when the next meeting is going to be. Okay. Okay, so ordinarily this, uh, the meeting for the 30th is uh, not usually held. Mrs. Wolseley already has sent a commission, uh, um, uh, a paper around saying that there is only going to be one more meeting. So I presume she's in favor of that. 
Did anyone want to make a uh, motion to cancel the meeting for December 30th? Do we need it? I don't no, it doesn't appear so. I don't think we need it. I don't think we're going to have any information ready have for it. you. Mrs. For, Wolsey's not ready. I make for a motion it. that we do not have a meeting on December 30th. Second. Any comments? Well, I have a question. Yeah. I had um, had a discussion with Fred and Jamie, I don't know what day it was, Wednesday or Thursday last week about uh, one of it Road and about how perhaps we could amend one of the Warren articles, like the one dealing with road improvement funds. To we're going to be taking talking about war, we're going to be talking about Warren articles next. It's next so on the agenda. Have till it doesn't 6th. appear. Well, we're voting on it right now. So, okay. uh, Did you second it. Yes, yeah, we have a first. We have a second. Did you want to say anything, Mrs. Wolsey? I think we're ducking meetings where we should be. Well, you're the here. one that sent a letter out saying that you weren't that the next meeting was going to be January. The next 6th. meeting is posted what, on the town uh, <coughs> website, and it shows clearly Board of Selectmen December 30th. I know, but that's not what I your letter said worldly. that you sent around. Well, I okay, think we have a first, we have a second. Wait a minute, was there was I don't know any vote was taken, but it was we're put taking on that, a vote put that right on now. the website. I don't know. Okay, well, but I think I, lo I noticed the letter that you sent around saying the next meeting was going to be the sixth. Well, that's what's that's what that's I. That's what you thought last week posted. when you sent the letter. Yes, but okay. it is clearly. So now we have a now, motion that we have we will not have the meeting. We have a first. We have a second. All those in favor of not having the meeting, which we usually don't have, all those in that's favor, ridiculous. raise your hand. Three. Regina. Unopposed. I'm opposed. Okay, two opposed. So the next meeting will be uh, January 6th. Sixth. Moving on to the 2020 Warren Articles. Now, Mr. Chairman. I am on that old business. There are a number of different things that we have to discuss briefly. Um, the Department of Public Works through the uh, New Hampshire Division of uh, Environmental Services has requested that we file a bond article for $30,000. Now, this inside that bond article, there is a provision that they will pay the $30,000 for us. Uh, the asset management for wastewater assets, we did this uh, for the Public Works Department a couple of years ago. We, we, this, this will be the third one in this series. Um, I will just simply caution everybody to by providing the knowledge that should we decide not to do this, the state's willing to pay for it. We just have to float the float the supposedly illegally float the bond in order to do it. They'll pay pay the bond back. Um, if we don't do it, then we're not going to be able to use SRF funding for the sewer plant anymore. That's one of the hope the the hooks. Has we moved to the Warren article? Well, I don't know what we're doing. It's frankly. a Warren article. We still it is a Warren article. article, yes, sir. Try yes. to listen, okay. and maybe you'll yeah. figure it out. Mrs. I am. Wilson. I am. So I will. I, I will make a motion that we move that to the Warren article. I'll second that. So okay, we just have. Just a, a yeah. While you talk, Fred. So you say it's a thirty thousand dollar. It's bond. thirty thousand dollars. Well, because of the nature of the way it's written, it's actually a borrowing, technically. That's why it has to be a bond. That's why we're it's a re it. re Usually we don't do vote. bonds, right? On, on such small right but that's the way the, this program is structured by the state and they're paying us back the thirty thousand dollars for the bond okay as long as we, as long as we carry out the program same as we did with uh, several other things that we've already done in the past okay. so with your permission I'd like you to approve that and I'd like you to authorize us to submit the information which the actually the article uh, to the budget committee for their review. So the motion. We have a first. We have a second. All those in favor. Three. I'm going to abstain. I'm Regi to you're resta uh, abstaining, here. and Regina is abstaining. So that has gone on to the budget committee. Okay. Now, um, Mr. Welch, what are we going to do about the Warren articles that we were just talking about? For solid waste? Yes. 
uh, we won't be able to finish those until at least the 6th of January. So they will be prepared by then? I'm hoping certainly so. I'm down on my knees praying for that. <laughs> um, we've been working on it diligently. Public Works has devoted a lot of time to this. Jamie and his staff has devoted a lot of time to this. Town Council has devoted a lot of time to this. We're going to try to get through that so that at least in the 6th you'll be voting on the uh, the solid waste with regards to construction and demolition and we may have three more for you at that point in time we just don't know we need some answers to some questions before we can give them to you we don't want to buy something of whole cloth that will penalize the town with a lot of money mm -hmm. and taking improper <coughs> excuse me taking improper action uh, to quickly ratify contracts could in fact place us in that position we don't really want to be there. We want to, we want to get these at the least cost possible to the taxpayers. So we're going to continue to work on those until the meeting of the 6th? Just so we're clear, I think what Fred's talking about here is the money that will be necessary to pay the cost associated with right. our current operating procedures and policies in 2020 based on the new rates. He's not talking about a policy change that I think you may be referencing. I just want to be clear on that. No, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I want to talk about the policy change, too, because right, right. I think that's overdue. I've asked yep. about it every week for probably two months now, okay. and I still don't really understand what's happening. So this is different, I understand. Yeah. Yep. So there's the money part, which is what Fred's talking about in this warrant. But the policy aspect. I, well, I mean, we have to discuss it sure because do. I'm telling you, people that are going to vote for these fire trucks, not fire trucks, but trash trucks and that, are very concerned and they'd like to know what the policy is. Yep. Well, or again, have a choice and ha have a voice in it. And, and all yep. I can answer to that is. We promised them two years ago that something would be done. Mm -hmm. And this board here all had a degree, uh, had an ability, uh, and uh, uh, what they were happy with was at least what is being done. Well, what was being done isn't being done now. So if you want something different than what I've described, and that is that from the board's direction thus far, <clears throat> what, all we're working on right now, Rick, is uh, the warrant articles that you'll see before you for the trucks, for everything <coughs> there, the recommendations, and working with Waste Zero, the consultant, in order to formulate what we'll come back to you with. But yeah. that will not happen no, in this No, I understand. I understand. I okay. understand. That, that's a, well, a separate situation. Okay, good. Okay. okay, but there is still another such separate situation that this board needs to deal with. Okay. All right. Yeah. So put it on the so, confounded agenda. It's on the agenda, Mrs. Where? Wolseley. It's called 2020 Warren Articles, and that's what we're talking about right now in case you don't understand. <sighs> And so what do we need to do for what you're talking about now that Jamie's, we're just working on them until the 6th. We're working on the warrant articles until the 6th. The mm -hmm. warrant articles you need to, and you're to come bring back. the contracts forward. Your committee's going to come back with recommendations with regards to the other things you charged them with. When? No, no. They were supposed to come back in time for us to do warrant articles. And I w all I'd say is we have reported back from that committee. Okay, so you're, what you're saying is it's kicked down the road and nothing's happening. What I'm saying is the recommendations that came out of that committee have been put before you for votes. And what is the happening? One when are we going to know? When are we going to decide? When are we going to talk about it? You, you have to the extent, Rick, I guess I'll, I'll say the question this way. How can we have a, a warrant article that says something done by January 6th? You tell us what you want, we can do that. What we have right now, and the plan has been, take the recommendations, and I understand you weren't satisfied with right. them. The recommendation of that crew, that, mm -hmm. that team, yep. was to do certain things. We've implemented each of those in this warrant in front of you, with the exception of one. And then, as a part of that recommendation, we came to you and we presented it and said, we recommend you institute a committee to help work through these issues further. Those recommendations will come after the first of the year because there was no point to my mind in doing it during the holidays. Okay. Nothing well, will be done. We, make, we came up with this. When we charged them with something to do, it was decided that something was going to happen that resulted in a Warren article, and that hasn't happened. I, I don't agree with that. And the board is supposed to make the Warren article. You absolutely can't. Well, so when are we going to do that? Tonight? Okay. No. There is no plan on our side, Rick, to give you a Warren article to say implement a page to throw program, for example, or implement okay. the well, other That's thing. what's been talked about for months, but it's not happening. It's kicked down the road again. And I don't think this is fair to the taxpayers of Hampton. I think okay. the taxpayers of Hampton are really taking it 
on the chin here. There's, there's no question that was part of the discussion, but that group did not make the recommendation to the board to but institute that modified But the group was, they were supposed to make a recommendation and this board was supposed to do something Understood. and nothing's happening. I understand you're not satisfied with it, Mike. My, my all, point is with say As far as I'm did. concerned, this is like the worst thing I've seen in the last 17 years well, that's that I've sat on I this think board. those 15 folks tried to do the best they can. And then they canned it at the well, very last minute. Two people canned it. Yeah, well, I, again, I would say... So I what is the board work. supposed to be doing? You can make that decision, sir. You, you okay, can make well, that decision. what are we going to do? Are we going to reaffirm what we've always done, which isn't what's happening now, or what? Okay, well, first of all, from my point of view, I'm going to agree with that we put a committee together. The committee looked at a, a, a very large and complex problem. They came up with some rec they did come up with some recommendations and, and they, they did not feel as if they could make a solid recommendation right now on exactly that it needed more study on how we're going to reduce our waste, how we're going to separate our, our recycling and what we're going to do with it. So I, I, I'm going to agree with what the committee did. That, that's my point of view. I think we should go if, if we're not doing what we had been doing, we should just go back to what we had, we had been doing. Yeah, and so all of a sudden, why are there so many people getting their trash picked up when it's supposed to be a limit of 10? What's the answer to that? To what? You, we, the, the, we've the talked about it. Our, our, our deal was that we didn't pick up units more than five. We didn't pick up more than 10 barrels, but that's not what's happening. And it really hasn't happened to a long time. It happened at the beginning, and things were going quite well until people found their way around it. Yeah. And now everyone's doing exactly what they want. And what's happening here are the taxpayers of Hampton are not being given a fair shot. Being very clear, I'm a taxpayer in Hampton. I absolutely, I see these numbers and know them uh, as well as probably anybody. And they are absolutely going up, Rick. No question about it. Yeah, then they're but being the asked to affirm that these policies are going up. The they're being asked to pay for more this trucks. This board and prior boards is what's being followed today. Mm -hmm. And mm, no, because the, the, not, the minimum of the 10 barrels and the minimum of the well, five, that's not what's director, happening. The director can speak to what, what is Why happening Why don't we bring him up here? Sure. Chris, They're please not, join us. They are not barrels. They are carts. Thank you, Mrs. Volsa. Carts. You're full of information. Yes. And we've dragged this along and dragged it on. I know. I totally agree with you. Years. This is what's happened for the last several mm -hmm. years, and we were promised something different when we appointed that committee, which did no good. I disagree with that statement. Well, I disagree with you. Oh, I just think it's so, terrible. Uh, are we in the, what is the current policy of what your folks pick up currently? Based upon last winter's vote, um, in other words, we still, if you're a conversion or you're a new condo, if you're five units and over, we're not picking you up, right. period. Good. Um, it was always that way. Right. And, that, and so that one policy decision is the law of the land right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, the second policy decision is because of the study committee and until things are adopted out of the study committee, um, we have not, you know, the people that all got letters is saying your service is being reduced, that hasn't changed at all. We have not picked up the carts from those people. So the same level of service is there. Uh, but they have the they have the amount of barrels they're supposed to have. Right. Correct. 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 Uh, um, yes, they have nothing. What about the people that have the large amount of barrels? Uh, because of the study committee, and I think that's where this is revolving back around. Right. The one thing that did solidly come out of the committee that I definitely agree with is because the committee was it was very it was a good committee that there was 14 people there from. Mm -hmm. the vast spectrum of the, the town. Um, Were when all we the people, started talking people about happy? Our, well, when we started talking <clears throat> about a pay-per-cart policy, and yes, there's documents drawn up about that, one thing that they definitely could not agree on would be, well, what would be a fair compensation? And so to, if you will, uh, bring both sides together so that they can all agree on it, the decision was, well, why don't we talk with waste zero Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, have them propose a program that would be fair and equitable, and at that that's what the committee agreed to do, which is what I think Jamie has brought forward, and I've seen a 
although I don't know where they stand, the contract documents from Waste Zero to do exactly that. Right. And, and that came out of the final decision from that committee. You're exactly right. The committee had made, so we made progress to get on to what I describe as a modified page of throw. There are a whole bunch of other things that the committee's working on. For example, as we talked about, reducing the glass usage, increasing the aluminum can usage, that type of thing that are discussions okay. that I absolutely think we'll see this yeah, year. Why don't we stick to what we were talking about, I'm about trying to. the way we've always done it <laughs> and well, what was allowed and about how people used to get 10 barrels. Now there's people getting many more than 10 barrels. I've been doing well, that for 40, years. Well, I've been, it's rumored that people get as many as 70 barrels. They've been doing that for years. Every single day. No, I don't well, think that's there's the, anyone with 70. Well, that's <laughs> what people are saying. Well, the, People uh, say things sometimes that aren't accurate. Right. Um, it happens a lot around knows, here. I, I can say, honestly, as the director, in the last year, I have signed a vast number of denial letters for new cars. Yeah. I've had people and we do know that people are uh, are having at least 40 barrels, they more than one. Barrels. I, I do know of one yes. location that has right and 40 maybe someone containers. else that has 39 or something like right. that. There's yeah, only there's two. A, there's that are a lot more pot. than the 10 barrels that it's supposed to Correct. be. And that no didn't one happen seems overnight, to care. Mr. Chair. No, it hasn't. But I will tell you, it wasn't always that way. It has slipped yes, around, has and people been. learned to take advantage of the rules. And now we're stuck with what we've got. Now we're, we're stuck, stuck with, with having to pay for more, uh, car, more uh, trucks, more this, more that. The taxpayers are paying a lot of money here, and all they get is the same old thing. No, I, I completely agree. As you said, I'm a taxpayer here. Yeah, and, again, and I know it's the numbers. very unfair. What I would say, Rick, is that it's the plan that was put together at the last meeting. If you want to change that, you have every right as the chair and members of the board. Last what meeting? When, we, when I came to see you with the results of what the committee had and the recommendation is what we have proceeded with based on the mm -hmm. direction of this yeah, board. I, still I understand you're not article, satisfied. And I kept saying that. Now we're at the last well, meeting. There's told still you, no Warren articles. And as I indicated to you, our Warren articles are going to be different than what you, I think, want. And I personally I don't believe make any decisions for me because you know I'm what? Not, I don't really care. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I, I, it doesn't affect me like it affects the taxpayers of Hampton. Right. And so, how I feel about it, I don't think you really know. So, I feel that we need, we promised the taxpayers of Hampton we would have a Warren article to present, and we have not one. From I what I can see here. Four, we just Mrs. got No, finished. those are for uh, something different. We just got finished talking with Mr. Musselman. He made a very good presentation. Those are different Warren articles than what our policy is, no, Mrs. Wesley. No, we need to we need to figure out what we We know do. with our policy. We're drowning in trash. And we're going and we to pay more. We don't need to do with, that. We are going to pay more, and get as rid Mr. Of Musselman just waste. told us. We're going to pay more, get and that's why there needs waste. to be a change. Well, that's what I'm For talking starters. about. We're on... We're, that's what I'm talking about. We well, need to do something, and years. nothing's being done here. Uh, Mr. Wardell? Could we take back the 40 barrels? Carts. Could you, uh, could you reduce carts, cart barrels? No, carts. It's potatoes, happening tomatoes. on so many levels. If, could, if we did, it would necessitate that those two or three locations do something dramatically different. For instance, I have suggested to the one that has the 40 carts, why don't you put in a uh, glass crusher? Um, if, you know, we do know from waste management's data that 20% of the glass, the, the total recycling yeah. stream mm -hmm. is glass. Right. Um, I think the message is very clear to the businesses down there, uh, especially as related, and I'm hearing an echo, I'm sorry. Uh, that they realize that glass and cardboard are the problems. Yeah. And I think this year you're going to see from the beach community during the summer a market effort to reduce those two things. We are going to assist them in that uh, we're probably going to pre-stage um, containers where you can only put in cardboard so we can keep <coughs> it clean, keep it segregated out, and the same thing with, with uh, glass. We're going to try and leaving open top containers specifically at the transfer station with just glass in them and haul those yeah. away. That will dramatically reduce the total tonnage recycling and probably help us keep uh, in reducing our rate of contamination. So now, Is that going to ha happen? Those things are within my uh, ability to do with, at the transfer station. They're operational issues. Um, 
so yes, they, they will happen. I've already purchased a $5,000 in blocks that it's going to take to create this new drop-off area, and I know that I can lease the containers for $50 a month um, to, to, you know, that's to pre-segregate out glass. So working with a couple of locations, I think we can really make some efforts to trim the, re the contamination rate and get, get a handle on some of this glass. I, I want to I get, dig in here. As far the as the, large, the, 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 the large, can I just wrap up yes. on the 40 containers? Yeah. As far as that, those particular sites getting more containers, we've had multiple conversations. They've got letters. You are not getting any more containers. But there are many can, people that have more than 10, which yes. is what it's supposed to be. Many, many, many. Okay. <coughs> the list. Glass. Yes. And I agree with you because we don't want that guy. Can you force? The business owners who sell <coughs> 200 uh, beer bottles and worth of drinking material uh, a night, can you make those businesses drive over to the transfer station and dump their glass? A lot of With the, the current summer. With the ordinances that are in a place, yes, because as the containers are weighing more than 75 pounds, yes. by ordinance, I can say we are no longer picking up that cart. Right. You need to handle that cart yourself. In addition, at the beach, which is the, probably the biggest problem, you have people <coughs> walking around the beach and they're throwing their hot dog with that an apple in That we will probably there. not be able to curb. You can't stop that, and that's contaminating that's right. everything. Right. That's why, in, mostly in the summertime, other than the businesses you're talking about, mm. all that gets picked up is solid waste, as trash. It's mm. not as recyclable. Yes, right. and that's increasing the cost right. too. And we can try and work with the state to get them to put ah. more recycling containers on their side, which they have said they would be willing to do. But there's no real supervision, and the recycling, I would say, at the beach, especially in the summer. They summers. only make up 4% of our total load. Well, I don't know. For that 13 weeks. So we can, I can manage that situation. Well, the thing is, there have been places like you mentioned, Hannaford's, the Galley Hatch, the casino has always done their trash. That's the Ashworth right. has always done their trash. And they're Responsible people taxes. have always done their trash. But we have the taxpayers of Hampton that are ta asked to take on the responsibility of paying Mr. more than their share. Okay. And, th and that is why the waste zero yeah. contract to come up with a reasonable and equitable plan for implementing that. And we've got to get the monkey off the backs of public works. They can't be spending their lives picking up trash. We've got to streamline. Unless, you know, I, as a, I've gone back to as far as 1985. We've always had 40 to 41 people. Um, at one time, we did have 22 part-time summer people. Yeah. I think now Try we to get hire now. 7 to 10. Yeah. Um, it's a terrible burden on public works. So the town has gone from 7,500 units to 9,000 units right. um, just alone. Yeah. Um, the truck, the back to one of the Warren articles, that sidearm truck and the rear pack are, mm -hmm. that we're asking for are really just to replace what we used to have. Right. So they're not like they're additional trucks. Um, so as the town has grown, the public works department as a, entity of 40 people has not really grown. Right. We do have 11 miles more of road. Again, we have 2,000 more structures, yeah. which is 2,000 more carts, 2,000 more, more sewer connections. I think the so people until, know. Until that, that was one of the things that the Salt Waste Committee did hear and recognized mm -hmm. in, one, in one of the Warren articles that they did want to support was you need that other sidearm truck back uh, they didn't know, and I didn't know at the time that 96, the frame was going to start to rot out on it. So th they knew that. And, and I think they also know that um, we, we're, we've reached a bubble. We really can't grow as a community or grow uh, the trash service without either more people or a change in the way that well, it's that being done. Paid. Paper cart that we were floating. There needs to be some changes, or we're going to continue. Right. The, the I don't think the people mind being asked to pay for these trucks. 
but they were, and they've been told here at this table that there would be a change in the way things are being done, but mm -hmm. there just isn't. And I don't think there's going to be in the future either. So any other Great. questions? Regina? Rick, I have one thing I yeah. want to add to what you just said. Yeah. Well, on Article 28, the side and rear loading, refuse, and recycling trucks. Now, Director Jacobs just said that this is to replace what we have. We're not adding trucks. But, I mean, I agree with you. With this warrant article being in the warrant, we're pretty much telling the voters that we are not going to change any policy. Mm -hmm. That's right, and that's what I disagree with. But the policies have to go to a warrant article, or are they just done here? No, you folks have the authority That's to change the policy. Yeah. Well, I think but we should make... Put that warrant article in there. We're telling them that we're not going to change anything because right. we need to get another truck so that we can keep doing what we've been doing, which I don't necessarily have a problem with personally. But, I mean, as far as the image that we're giving the voters, that's the way I read it. And that's yeah, one of the well, reasons the why visitor, the, I've the, been abstaining until we get all the warrant articles. Yeah. I think the voters are the ones that are losing here. They've been expecting a change. Losing they expected years. a change last year, well, many years ago. Years. Then last year was going to be for sure. And then it was going to be for sure this year. Now we're to another year. That's three years just, and they always expected a change. I think it's pathetic. Is all I can say. Anyone else want to say anything? We might as well. Uh, and where do we go from here on of the other warrant articles, Fred? Well, if you want to get back to the warrant articles, we can. <laughs> yeah, I, I think well, it's a losing battle. We're getting nothing here. This was kicked down the road, and it's going to happen again. I think we should. Uh, and I agree with Mrs. Wolseley, and that always makes me oh shake. Oh my soul! <laughs> I agree with her. Mr. Chairman, there's, uh, there's a couple more warrant articles we need to talk about. First one is the uh, the heating system for the for this building, second floor west side. Yes. Uh, it's you, it's Chris. in the process of going, and Thank we keep on have. regularly repairing it. The crews are here all the time working on it. We've gone uh, a couple of weeks with only one day's heat uh, during the cold spell we had, and uh, it's causing a problem from the standpoint of our employees and. The maintenance of the building. Uh, we're proposing to change that whole heating system over uh, for $32,000. We want to use a, uh, a new multi-split system that uses no gas. It's a heat pump. <clears throat> and it will heat each of those rooms upstairs individually and separately if need be because that's the way the system is set up. What does a heat pump mean? Uh, it takes the heat out of the ambient air. Oh. It just, well, you want to put it this way, Simply put, did you squeeze the heat out of it? All all air has heat in it. It's because we uh, got hot air in this. Yeah, well, there's uh, plenty of that. We could, of course, tap always tap the tap the legislature. Then we probably have to keep <laughs> windows in the building open if we had opening windows. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to put that article on the warrant. I agree with it, and uh, I think that will be very helpful. So I'll move to get it on there. I'll I'll second that, and can we have discussion. Yeah, yeah. sir. Because. A lot of some offices were freezing. Oh, some yes. people were dying of the heat. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. But a heat pump works off electricity, right? Yes. There's no fuel other than just the electric current to run current, it. The mm -hmm. pump current to run it. So, right. we, are we figuring that it's going to be a cost savings? And in, in uh, we'll no longer be burning gas on the second floor on the mm -hmm. west side. Right, but but the will it be a cost up. saving? Will the electricity go up to the point where it's the same? That's a, that's all well, I'm asking. We operate on a demand basis electric meter. The minute you turn that on, okay, you have set an 11 month demand ratchet. So we're going to spend at least 80 percent of that money, even if we turn it off for the next 11 months. All right. So and it's, it's the way the electrical rates work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll save as much money as we can because we're not going to be buying any more fuel for it. And you'll have more, a more uh, a good, uh, a good result. Well, the building will be heated. Let's the put that will away. Be heated. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be evenly heated because each room will be taken care of individually. Any yeah. other comments, Regina? Did you want to comment on this one? No, Fred. You have this to come out of the unassigned fund balance, so there'll be new, yeah. no new tax effect. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So, all in favor of that going forward? Unanimous. Okay. And Fred? We have another bill uh, considering, we, we've all discussed yeah. 
problems with people who want to raise their houses or they want to potentially surrender them mm -hmm. to the federal government. They buy them out, buy their interest out because of flooding considerations. Yeah. We're trying to put a program together to, uh, it's the FEMA Advanced Assistance Grant. It's going to cost us $50,000 to do this. Again, that would come from the unassigned fund balance. Uh, this money will provide a program so that people will have the ability to come in and apply. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to pay the town's share of it because we're not planning on funding that. Yeah. Uh, but they would have an avenue to, if they wish to, they could raise their buildings or they could sell them to the federal government depending upon the situation and where they are and how deep the flooding mm -hmm. is and, and how frequent. So uh, without this program, we can't move forward in satisfying either one of those requirements. But it'll I'll cost us fifty thousand dollars to put the program together. I'll move that we put that on the warrant. I'll Mr. second it. Okay. Any questions, Regina? I'm good. Okay. All those in favor? Regina? Oh, I'm good. Yes, I. You're in favor. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. And Fred? Mr. Chairman, we had we presented our budget uh, articles to the budget committee last week. Uh, they had, we had suggested to them, and they had a, more or less agreed that if we could, we should put uh, a few articles on to be paid from surplus monies, and uh, that is the un unassigned fund balance. And we'd like to recommend to you that the fire protection officer's vehicle for $40,000, the building inspector's vehicle for $24,000, the transfer station study for $50,000, the DPW building modifications for $85,000, and the town office heating system for $32,000 all come from the unassigned fund, ba unassigned fund balance. So you'll... I'll make that motion. Yeah, and I will <laughs> second, but Fred, so you're consolidating some of the existing articles and putting one single article. We yeah, are. That's a good idea. We're, yes, we're, I agree. Well, no. These, would, these will continue no. to be single no. articles. Oh, oh. We're just talking about the funding mechanism. That. Right. Yeah, oh, okay. too bad we couldn't do that. That would yeah. be nice. But I bet you can't. This is just changing the funding mechanism. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and I was going to say, I don't think. Fred, do right now our unassigned fund balance is eight million eight hundred thousand dollars around figures. Yeah. Okay, in our and we, the, yeah. what is recommended that we have is one million two hundred and forty-two thousand dollars to date. Okay, so we're in good shape. Mm -hmm. We're in very yes. good shape. Yeah. And that unassigned fund balance has come from taxpayers. It yes, has come yes. from taxpayers, and what it does is it, is, it enables us to uh, fund the operations of the town and the schools uh, through the calendar year without having to borrow. Right. Uh, when I first came here, we had, a, we had a zero fund balance, and we were borrowing everything we spent, oh, yes. which yeah. was a bad situation because we were yeah. paying huge interest yeah. fees. Uh, we're no longer doing that. We no longer have those expenses. Yeah. And we're running along, keeping a fund balance that's sufficient to keep the town running without having to borrow. And even with this, we still will have it sufficient. We certainly will. Okay. And the yeah. undesignated fund balance gains interest while it's sitting there. It does. For it is an interest-bearing yeah. account. I'm in favor. All those in favor, unanimous. Aye. Okay. Mr. Chan, we have, I have one other. And... and uh -oh. uh, the deputy manager and I and finance and town council have worked diligently on this warrant article. It's one of the, this is a pass around. Thank uh, you, Fred. It is a recycling revolving account. And what, what it does here is to, is it enough? Um, here. No, here's another one. What it does is it enables us to establish an account under the statute, RSA 3195H1A and RSA 149M19 and 20, which will allow us to take funds that are derived from the intake and, out, and output of recycling materials. Uh, as you know, we do sell things during the course of the year. We sell scrap metals. We sell all kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those monies would go into a revolving account to help pay for recycling operations, for storage, for separation, for collection, mm -hmm. for the loading of equipment, the shipment of such materials, the purchase, replacement, and repair of recycling equipment, vehicles and carts, and the uh, collection, storage, loading and transportation expense, in addition to personal <coughs> services and contractors expenses. And we'd like to start that account with $80,000 in funding from the unassigned fund balance. 
I'll make that motion. I'll second, and you should be able to uh, say sell the glass, sell some of these recyclables, and that would go into that. It would go into the fund, fund. and it would help pay for operations. Okay. Uh, it's similar to the police pay detail account in right. some ways. And the EMS funds, other right. ones that are similar. Yeah. The ambulance funds and so the forth. The intention will be the revenues that are generated from those things in there can be mm -hmm. a wash account where right now they're hitting mm -hmm. the expense account constantly. Right. right. So right. it won't be an so annual. Expensive. We're trying yeah. to fix this so we don't have to annually appropriate money out of taxes yeah. and this to is, do these operations. This right. is another one of the, the recommendations from the Solid Waste Committee, Chris pointed out. Yeah. So. We would like to do that with your permission and put, put it. So we have a first and we have a second. All those in favor? Regina? Aye. Yeah. She, Aye. It's unanimous. I, I'm going to just make a quick comment here. If, if we, I think we need to have better access. For example, for my, my one pickle jar and my <laughs> two beer bottles, if we could lo locate a drop off so people don't have to drive all the way to the transfer station. But if we can arrange a, a place or a little... Uh, Chris, is the, the staff is working on that very thing. Excellent. Um, and it will be available at the transfer station as well. But many of these things are why one of the articles that Fred put before you is to take a look at, since okay. 95, we haven't really done anything with the transfer yeah. station, is designing to help with these yeah. things. Right. So, so on Monday night, I can bring my pickle jars and my beer bottles. As long as they're open, not night, because they're not open, but you can bring them down while they're open, yes. Yes, please bring them down while they, they're open. And they've got to be clean. They do, yes. They've got to be clean. Right. Ish. There, there are a number of things that we can do with, with glass, and, and particularly with glass, because the... Uh, For the roads, yeah. Well, there's a federal law that says the state has to use 10% crushed glass in their, in their asphalt overlays. Is that the last highways. one you want to ask about? That is the last one. Okay. Sir. Regina, did you want to um, talk about uh, the Winnicunit Road thing that you were talking about? Yes, yeah, because I brought it up again with uh, both the town manager and the assistant town manager, and they were talking about the possibility about how I know we all got an estimate from Public Works about how it's going to cost roughly $5.6 million doing like certain sections. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think it was spoken down to like right. six or seven different sections, maybe more. Correct. But we were also talking about how we could perhaps add more money to one of our road improvement funds to uh, maybe, you know, try to get at least some of it started er earlier rather than later. You know, it's like if we don't have anything on the 2020 warrant article for one account it then that means at best it's not going to get started till the spring of 2021 and i really think that people the taxpayers in hansen would like to see at least some sort of an effort okay at well, this point road. regina can i ask I mean, it's, the, horrendous. Um, the, it's horrendous it's not just and it's i mean and then we also talked about how it could possibly even maybe just repaving it i don't know if maybe jamie or fred want to chime in on this but how I mean, I know I drive on it. I'm driving on the shoulder okay. because can, at this I don't point, want to drive in the middle yeah. of it because it's a wreck to drive on. Can oh, I ask so. some questions of the uh, DPW director because he's here about this? Yeah, yeah. the other one. I okay. mean, I just happened to okay. be talking to Fred and Jamie about it. But. Yeah, I think we've all talked to him about it. Um, but what I would like to know is um, it, what are the the next streets that are on the list. Is Winnicunit Road one of them? No, the next street that's physically on the list is Lock Road, yeah. along with Lane right. and Richard Street. Mm -hmm. But those are all, Lane is already out to bid, Richard Street would fall behind it, and then it was Lock Road. Mm -hmm. And then what is the status of those three streets down at the beach? Which which, the yeah. three streets that were voted to be fixed that were never done. The last three streets on oh, Ashworth you mean Avenue. Oh, back in the 14 yeah. memo? Um, Actually, it's more than three. Yeah, it's... it's, it's, it's is it four? It's, it's like six like or seven. Six or seven. Yeah, I agree with Fred. <laughs> it was they weren't completed. That, yeah. They weren't completed. Yeah. It's, it's only like, ever been mentioned here. It's, it's Manchester, Hobson, yeah. all the way down to... Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's a number of them. Yeah. Um, as not to not answer your question, but the Winnicunit Road, 
uh, section. Uh, we did have, you know, we have a standard um, methodology, if you will, for doing those estimates. I looked at the whole road myself. Um, I divided up into nine sections uh, because I don't think any one, se there's no two sections that are exactly the same. Yeah. Some of the sections have some drainage. Some of the sec one of the sections needs some drainage. Um, I included paving on all of those, but um, the other thing is that you know s sections like from Mill Road to Park were more expensive than the section uh, down in the area of Acadia mm -hmm. and 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 Emerald and those streets. So uh, knowing that we could only handle so much confusion and discomfort, if you will. In the traveling public, that's why I broke it up into the nine sections. Mm -hmm. My estimate came up about 4.5. We increased it to 5.5 because of I didn't include survey or engineering yeah. in those. And then, of course, over the lifetime of the project, there would be cost increases. Mm -hmm. That's full reconstruction. Here. They're full reconstructions because all but one section has clay pipe. Mm -hmm. There's only yeah. one section that has yeah. PVC, right. and that's from the five. From the landing road intersection yeah. going east. So, do you think it's practical to do them uh, in sections, or does it have? Would are you saying it would be more practical to they, do it? They got to do root I, one. It would be more it. practical to to blend those nine sections into the yeah. current plan that we have. Well, what about that? It, it, like where you mentioned Lock Road, it would be would it be would it be good to do the section of Wooden Connaught Road along where Lock Road is? When we do Lock Road, we'd actually come out in when it cut it to that manhole and go left it, or right for about 50 feet. That would that make way sense. we don't redig that section up when we come through. Okay. Yeah. And Rusty? Yeah, just out of curiosity, I know what what would be a rough estimate to to uh, skim coat that sort of like we did Exeter Road uh, to buy us a few time. I, you've got a lot on your plate right now. You've got a lot going on with the. Uh, with I bet the, it's five to six hundred thousand. Because you have a lot going on with the uh, uh, wastewater route treatment one. plant. Right. Treatment. You have Route One. That's a lot going on right now, and to try to try to put this on there too, I think is totally unmanageable for our for our public works. Excepting that it's going to take almost two years. To one to, in other words, let's say in March, an appropriation was funded. It would take till June to get a contract, somebody under, to design it. Yeah. It would take almost a full year to get it designed and engineered. To get the sewer uh, replaced, I have to submit plans to Concord, get them to approve it. Um, you're talking the construction season of 21 late. That's why I'm saying it, it, if we had a cost to just overlay it to, to uh, buy us that couple of years yeah what do you think no. of that proposal it's it's five to six hundred thousand easy it's why and, and five to six hundred thousand easy yeah and also uh while the budget committee was on our uh, three hundred thousand that we put into the yearly um yeah. thing uh, a motion was made by the budget committee to increase that to five thousand uh five hundred thousand yeah. now i don't know if, if they can do that there or we need to affirm that you need to move to change the warrant article because the budget committee cannot do that by statute. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Mr. Waddell? Do we have an infrastructure plan? We do. A priority list. And the CIP yes. we have not And which, are we sticking to a priority list? Because I... At present we are with Lock Road, Elaine, and Richards. Those streets were and have been in the CIP for the last five to six years. Okay. And then where does it go from there? You, we can. We always amend it every year. We'll be amending it or updating it this June, if it's the board's prerogative. Projects like Winnicott Road can be blended into, or I know Winnicott Road's in there, but it can be moved up. Well, should it be the board's prerogative? Should it be a plan that's approved by the DPW? This, these are the needs, and these are the priority of the Two needs. Twofold. Yes, I can move Winnicott Road up. Um, we certainly can look at that, but it's also part of when we developed the CIP, it was partially based of, well, not partially, it is. It's based on trying to achieve level funding. But if you're going to take th something like the capital improve fund for the roads and go from 300000 to 500000 it then 
uh, is gives us a greater opportunity to modify that plan to dovetail those roads exactly. in. Okay, but if you if you're moving something up, you're moving something down. If you give us, if there's more money in the bucket, we're painting more walls. We're okay. painting more. But what roofs. I'm saying is, if we have a priority list, right. if we have a list, and we have we have the needs here, it's and we insane. have the needs. This is a, a my priority list goes out 20 years though. Yeah. Right. So, so I think that was there's the an issue comment. of fairness for the people that are expecting right. this work. And to that, be done. that's why I'm right. saying that if it right. goes out 20 years, and we and we can put a band-aid on it like we did Exeter Road to uh, allow us to get to that and work it up through it. That's my point. The point is that we can at least get it covered, at least make it so that road's a little more safer, mm -hmm. and, and, and get down the road where we know, what, and you can give you a chance to yep. engineer yep. what you need to do. That, that's my only concern. Yep. I agree. Yeah, Mrs. Wolseley. You've got band-aids on the roads all over town, and the roads are disgusting. And I get more complaints about the roads than any other issue in this town. And you've, got route, and you've got Route 1. Go ahead, Regina. Where is, Chris, where is the one of it right now on the capital improvement plan? Let me look. While, while Chris is checking, um, you've got Route 1 next year. Do you know what a mess that's going to be? They put it off from this year. That's going to be one hell of a project. Exactly what I'm saying. That's why I say we can't get Route One and But we've been talking about this time. for years. Well, route One will be completed. That's yes. the second part of it's already funded. It's but it's a devil. Done. It's a devil of a project. Absolutely. That is a huge yeah. project. And, and that's each, going to drive. Each phase has been absolutely. But, that's going to drive that's public works crazy. If we approve something for One Connect Road, it's going to be another year before we even start it. I mean, this is. It's not going to get cheaper. Sure, it's going to get more expensive. You'll be lucky if we get it done in, in ten years, okay. Mr. Waddell. Okay. Well, Rick, you said fairness to the taxpayers. That mm -hmm. now, what about? You brought up the roads that haven't been finished. Yeah, right. How can we I'm move, on, how can we move to a too. new road right. when you got roads that haven't been finished? Right. I mean, People that's, voted for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Voted for it. Yeah, that's it should what I'm be saying. I mean, it, it just seems to me that, that if we have a priority list, it should be done. It should be done. But and, we've had a priority list for years. Years. But, but also consider that this is a dual, it's almost like a dual sword project in that. One of the other things that we're going to achieve by every time we do a road, and especially a road like Winnicunit, where it's a main collector line, yeah. is I'm already seeing the effects. Uh, we're decreasing the flow into the plant. I think we're going to be under by about a hundred million gallons this year, huh. which doesn't seem like much. But if you, we continue to lower, get rid of infiltration coming right. into the plant, right. it buys us time on any future plant increases. And that's those streets down at the beach. Correct. And, right. and, and yeah. one of them is that last section of Winnicunit Road, as it mm -hmm. is across those, that's one of the nine sections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any of these projects, especially the bigger lines, like collector lines, like a Winnicunit, more so than let's say Acadia, okay? Because it's a smaller side street. Mm -hmm. You would, when you tackle those main collector roads and get those done first, you're having, I think, a better and a bigger impact, and along with the ones at the beach, you're having a bigger impact on that infiltration rate into the plant, which has the double effect of mm -hmm. forestalling the plant reaching its capacity. And they would be on your priority list. They'd exactly. be high on your priority list already. Yeah. If the, if the money was greater, the, the yeah. priority list would have more projects on it. And that's why it. I said if we move it to the 500000 the money is greater. Yep. And if we did have something in there, so in the meantime, get the road patched so you can yeah. <laughs> at least make it safer. <laughs> and then work on some of this other stuff because you guys are busy. Yep. So, Jim, what are you suggesting about those roads at the beach? I'm suggesting if they would vote it on and they were done, I'd, they should be done. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I can't see how you can say they shouldn't be done. Mm -hmm. Would you like to weigh on that, Regina? Well, yeah, I agree. But I mean, we're gonna. How much is that gonna cost? I think that we need to come up. We certainly know the figures very well, and there's no reason why that couldn't be done for a Warren article. It, Manchester and Hobson were in the 125 to 150 thousand region right. each. Mm. So the two projects, those two were just, you know, 
250,000. If you take the other seven, you're talking proportionally about the same. And how many years ago did we uh, skim coat Exeter Road? Four, 2015, five. I believe. So mm -hmm. almost, yeah, it'll four be, it's approaching four years. Still in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. High Street is a mess. Yeah. yeah. It's, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna like me for this, but I think we need a building moratorium in this town instead well, of that's continuing. Not gonna, we're not gonna talk about instead that. Instead of now, continuing to have to have a problem with these time. roads, well, it is a problem. Every single oh, road yeah, and every new development. That's not gonna come up. And a lot more building and stuff because. Yeah, that's having an effect on the whole town. We I mean, need a moratorium. So, are, is anyone right in favor of putting that warrant article about those three streets? We have. It seems that we have a consensus here right now, of no, three I'm votes. Not, I'm not going to do anything until they do Route One and then see where we go from there. Well, we have. Can't do everything can you present a warrant article because we do have three votes? Can you get one together for those last three roads at the beach? We have. What I had proposed a time. warrant article. Don't have it with me, but I did propose a warrant article to complete the streets at the beach, mm -hmm. and it was pulled. Or do we need a warrant article because it's already been approved? Well, you do need a warrant article because you have no money. Why can't that come out of the <laughs> unassigned uh, fund balance? Well, yeah, it, that's what I said when we originally talked about it. I think that's the type it. of thing we approved, should do. Then why don't we take it out of money we already have? Yeah. Why do we have to ask them I again? I totally for agree. Money? You can, but uh, I'll have to look at the, the total impact. You may be back to borrowing money to run the town. Well, you know what? I think that we've managed you not might to before. You want to think instead of doing that, if you really want to do that, is to float a bond issue to get them done. And hire a contractor to come in, do the engineering, get it done. Yeah. Dig it up, get it done. can't do that by So itself. we can do that without a warrant article? No, you need a warrant article for that. For any okay. appropriation, you need a warrant okay, article. Okay, so can you get a warrant article together like that? I'll have it for you. Okay, we'll, well, that will be our next And what about Wana Cunnet? Well, don't hold your breath. Um, it looks. Well, I say that you're going to be better. I tell you that the chances of passing a bond, I mean, bond for Wana Cunnet are going to be greater than passing a bond for something that we've already technically should have paid for. Well, it sounds like you don't have the uh, votes here that are going to go for that. No, I don't, but I can still talk to the public, and that's no, what I'm doing. And it what sounds like that maybe we ought to consider, so. if we're going to be doing Lock Road, maybe where that's such a major road that we can, Chris says that there's advantages to doing those hookups at the same time or something. Yes. Yeah, uh, certain I mean, portions I like that of idea. It. Whoever you said it record, yeah. someone said yeah. about Lock Road. Because it was take this two years to get it designed and approved. Mm -hmm. You I have money. It, yeah. uh, when he puts it into nine sections. Yeah, Chris is talking now. You yeah. currently have money in your in that cap, salt, uh, road improvement capital reserve fund. I would, I know it was 300000 from last year, 300000 from this year. It's already got 600000 and some interest in it. We could solicit proposals to get it surveyed and designed, at least Winnicott, certain sections of Winnicott Road, mm -hmm. use 200,000 of that money, and I'm just picking a number out of yeah. the air. Have that done. Once you have those plans done and approved, mm -hmm. we could more reasonably get a good bid yeah. and know what that is up, and either choose to take it out of the capital reserve fund or fund it as a separate article. Yeah. But to Regina's point, it, it's going to take a couple of years. And mm -hmm. it's yeah. definitely not going to happen in 2020 and may not even happen in 21. Right. Depending yeah. on what so else. So again, going. getting back to my point, if it's not going to take <laughs> at least a two, two or three years to do this. So why not use some would of it? Would it be more prudent to take some of that money and overlay that road so that we can get to that point? Sections that we're not going to get to for 10 years? Yes. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. if, if it's going to take 10 years and we do nothing between now and 10 years, just imagine what that road's going to look like between now and then. And right. you can take like into like consideration the um, drainage underneath? Not with an overlay. That no, that, no, no, I know, understand but that. I but have are there parts that don't yes. need that kind of yeah. construction right. underneath? Because I have clay drainage pipes, too. Yeah. I'm, yep. just, I'm trying to get us with, with roads that are going to be maintained to a point 
understanding that we're going we're gonna to be digging it up and tearing it up. Roads right that we're not going to get to, to for seven to ten years from now should be resurfaced. Yeah. Absolutely. To hold them together. And that's what I'm getting. I growl every time maintained. I drive up High Street to well, come over here. I growl on a lot of roads. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, so would it be more prudent to, one, affirm the uh, Budget Committee's recommendation to add the 200000 yeah, I think we should do that. To do that, first of all. And then should we come up with a warrant article for what let's take, to, let's re take a to look resurface? At the, I know it's already an existing warrant article where we accept the money from the state and match it, and uh, we ought to look to that. Good. So, so why don't I, I recommend you, you deal with the additional 200000 the Tonight. budget committee wanted to now. Yep. And I think there's a consensus you just directed us to go back for your next meeting and come back with a couple of options on the resurfacing, more solid numbers, and the beach streets that you want to look yes. at. And then you can make a decision. Yep, it's okay. already been looked at. Thank it's you. already yeah. been voted yeah. on. Yeah. Thank you. I think that and works. You can get it more solid on your numbers, yeah. but I'd take that vote to, re to, to agree or disagree. I, I just numbers. want to get it so that it's, it's safely passable yeah. while, while it's going to take us time to get this whole yeah. project. If let, you, let us get you more details. I make a motion. Did you want to say something, Fred? If you take the two hundred thousand dollars that the or the yeah the two hundred thousand dollars that Additional. the budget committee wishes to put in this particular warrant, okay, for that particular appropriation and capital reserve fund, mm -hmm. you can't spend that. You need to have a warrant article to take the money out because you don't control it. Okay, but this could be for our next. Why don't you just spend the? If you're going to put the two hundred thousand dollars up for for appropriation, why don't you just spend the two hundred thousand dollars and overlays? Right. Well, my. My only thing is, is we're trying to build that fund up. So to do projects like, like when it kind of you rules. have a one hundred and fifteen million dollar deficit, and it's not going to get any narrower if we if, don't add if, to that. If you well, adding to it at two hundred thousand dollars is going to take you the next fifty billion years to get it finished. I understand okay? that. So what you need is a bond <laughs> issue to start tackling some of that hundred and fifteen thousand dollar deficit you have. And I do that, but as as we've been said. We have, it's going to take us a couple of years to get to that point, to figure it out and what we can do. That doesn't make any difference. Even right. if you, if you appropriate the money in a bond issue, right. you don't start paying for it until you again. actually use the money. Yeah. Okay? You have the authority to do it, which means you can go out and do the planning. you got to do that anyhow. Yeah. So once the planning is done, you can do a, a million and a half, two million, three million, four million dollars worth of worth of appropriation and expenses. But if it, if it takes you a couple of years, you'll have an extra. If it took you two years, you'd have an extra four hundred thousand that you don't come up with with a bond, and it would level things out. I would no. say. I. I'm not going to sit here all night, folks. You can I'd rather wait to the sixth and have more information. Yeah, and have more that's information. fine. Well, that's we, fine. we do have a lot to do with the same yeah. vote. Yeah. yeah, and Fred, bring back, bring us back your answer of what you're talking about right now. Okay, and we can we can bring back information for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to jump yeah. into something. And I just want to point out, no matter how bad it is, it's still not as bad as all the roads in Salisbury. That's Massachusetts. What do you think? <laughs> Okay, are we moving okay. here? Mrs. Wolseley, yes. please <laughs> stop. If you want to leave, leave. Well, or do you want to stay so that we can ask the questions that you asked? Well, this Brent. is why we ought to have free our frequent meetings and not drop no, our every it's Monday why, night Maybe meetings. why you, you just paid attention, things will go good. So why don't you start with what you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I, I noticed that we've got a lot of stuff slipping through the cracks here, so I thought I would... Uh, I would uh, ask a little bit, um, 47 Ocean Drive basketball facility and all that. Do we have the authority, if people are intruding on the right of way or coming into the road and they're putting up these things that are dangerous, uh, can we just have public works or have somebody just knock them down and get it over with, Mark? Can we just, cl well, can we just say, you know, you, you're, you put an illegal basketball thing here take it away you know take it down by x date and if they don't just go bulldoze it uh yes oh i like that <laughs> so uh, where are we at with that situation do we know ah uh, i like it when mark we have an agreement to move it in the spring when the frost is out of the ground it'll be put back on his property but we fiddled this over for what months well, the problem is you have to give notice. Well, you did give notice. They yes, get the damn thing right. out of the right of way. And every time, so, it's just, 
Mark goes through this all the time. <laughs> we, we bring somebody to court because they violated the law. Yeah. Okay? He files a case in court. The opposing attorney files a case equal to it, and they start dickering back and forth with motions. It takes sometimes uh, a year, a year and a half, two years to get something done. Get the plow truck. No, I don't oh. think so. Is it, is it, does it block plowing? No. Is it blocking anything? Not at the moment, no. They do it in the spring. It's illegal, yes, but I, I, these things you, drag. They have a, you have a... If they lower the basketball, it's, it, the basketball nets are arranged so that it be, can be cranked up and out of the way. If they lower it so the kids can play basketball in the middle of the street, which is the only place they can play, okay, <sighs> then that's a problem. And we don't wish to accept that problem because it's a problem for everybody. Plus, the things erected on town property. So, Mark, we does there need to be... We have told him to move it. He's going to move it in the spring. And, we, and he's been told if he doesn't move it, we're going to take it down. And so and what's, what's the date that you gave him to? Spring is a big word. I'm afraid. So it never grounds anyway. Thaws. Just as soon okay. as the ground thaws. If and he hasn't we, moved it, we're I, going to take it down. And do we have any liability for it there, or does he? If it stays there, you mean? I checked with him. He supposedly checked with his insurance carrier who could kill us. Okay. Yeah, well. So, so we, I don't think that's the case. Can we okay. say April 1st? Well, if it's well, what? We'll allow people into it right away until after April 15th. So, so yeah. April 15th. April 15th, he has to. Well, I just, I hate to see these things dragging. Well, there, you got then, a time limit on that. Then the April status 15th. of LED lighting um, conversion. We had an email from uh, uh, Jim Hafey uh, to Welch, Brannigan, Clausen, and Jacobs. Do we have any update on that? They are about 90% complete, as I understand. I asked uh, Chris... Uh, I asked Public Works today, I Excellent. talked to the Deputy Director, and they've been slowed down because of weather. Right. And right. they are going to finish it just as soon as they can, but they're, but they're proceeding along every day, good. changing fixtures. That just occurred to me because that's something that I, I'd like to follow right. through Chris, on. Chris, you got a better figure than 90%? No, I, I think you're more, yeah, you're more accurate than I'm. Okay, good. Next one is uh, email from Pete Tilton, November 19th on the... Uh, authorities um, on the uh, working of uh, people working in the town forest or people just going in there and chopping things down or making messes I can imagine what's going to happen when that confounded rail trail goes through but uh, are we taking a look uh, at what Peter's complaining about because there have been incidents in there well we know who's doing it okay can we put them in jail no we can't they're juveniles we know who's doing it, and, and we're taking the police department's taking appropriate action, but I can't identify the people uh, because they are juveniles. Okay. Um, in the Hampton Union, uh, December 4th, had an article in there on the uh, this thing with refugees and communities willing to accept. Doesn't apply to the town of Hampton. It doesn't only applies to the cities of Concord, okay. Nashville, and Manchester. I, that, I just couldn't figure that out, so I'm, I appreciate. Uh, that and uh, let's see I think that was about all that I got excited about okay any okay. other uh, new business or old business I mean Rick I have an old business okay um, for are we gonna have a public hearing on the sports betting yes so that's gonna be one of our January yes okay and there will be a warrant article, correct? There will be a warrant article. Okay. The board's voted for that, so there will be a warrant yeah. article. So do we have the dates of the public hearing? I haven't figured it out yet. Been too busy working on solid waste. And yeah. are you going to let um, the man know down at the beach? Oh, we'll let everybody know. Everybody, <laughs> it's not going to be a secret. <laughs> so, but we're going to talk to Because them. he's going to be willing to bring people in for right. this public hearing. And so one of them got in touch with me today. Yep. Yeah. So we'll be letting them know. We, we certainly will because he's already asked us to do that. <coughs> okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other old business? Nope. Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. And there's two people sitting in the audience forever. And they're very nice. Please join us. This is better than TV. <laughs> we already went over that. <coughs> No, I do, I, no, it says the 2020 meeting schedule. Fred gave us two options here. No, he Okay, gave we're us dealing with them now, okay? Come well, on up. He gave us two yeah. options. Oh, please. I didn't realize they, they were waiting for them. Yeah. Yes. Oh, 
love them. I don't know why they didn't move them forward. I thought they liked us so much they just stayed. Linda loves a so. good time, but not this good. Go ahead. And here is Linda and Jim. And Jim, don't forget, is going to be at the Heritage Commission. Oh, good. All right. Good. Yes. I will be happy to see you there. The Medcalfs. Um, and Linda is the president of the Hampton Historical Society. So I guess we're, we're speaking to item 9-2? Yes. That? Yes. yes. Um, it's Watch, yeah, you can explain it. Cause. All right. Um, the, our um, treasurer has been keeping in our books, on our books, $3,108. He's been keeping this amount of money um, in our books. It was money that was to be used for the grist mill for... Uh -huh the funding of preserving the, um, what was that thing called? <laughs> <laughs> the waterway? Is that the paddle. Well, it, was, it was really, I mean, the, it, as I understand it, 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 it was contributed Spill years away. ago for purposes of, of supporting the, the grist mill yeah. in a general sense. And, and, and uh, the grist mill, the pond, and the um, dam. Spillway. Dam. Um, and so this money has been there. It is no longer is needed for any of that use. So the treasurer of the society would like to get rid of the money, get it off our <laughs> no. books, and give it to the town. And that was the letter that was sent to you. We voted on it at the meeting in December and uh, to uh, give the money to the town to be used for grist mill activities. Yeah. And uh, that's why I'm here tonight. Rick, I, uh, at our Heritage Committee meeting, the one before the most recent one, uh, the committee did ask me to check on the grist mill and the blacksmith shop because we want to figure out what kind of uh, money is available and where it should go and all that. And I did send them an email to uh, our very patient uh, public works director. I have got uh, information on the grist mill that, that's printed up and I'm going to bring it to the next Heritage Committee meeting and I'm waiting for the one on the blacksmith shop. And I feel guilty because uh, Chris Jacobs is up to his ears right now. But I will try to get that for the next Heritage Commission, Commission, com Committee, whatever it is. <laughs> I'll get that, and we'll pass out copies to the uh, to the committee. Is, is there a problem with us taking the money, the town? Yeah, what would you say? For no, uh, if it's under ten thousand dollars, it needs to be done at a selectman's meeting. There's okay. no requirement yeah. for a public hearing as long as it's under ten thousand yeah. dollars. Once the money is taken, it has to go into the custody of the town treasurer. Yeah. And then the Heritage Commission can give her a request to withdraw money for whatever purpose is yeah. legal. Yeah. Okay. And is that the purpose you, you were looking for? That was the reason for the letter. We wanted to just be able to give the money to the town. Yeah. And, and, um, and then if you say yes, uh, yeah. then our treasurer will write a check and give it to mm -hmm. you. I'll have the material for the Works. next Heritage I make a motion meeting. that we accept the 3000 180. $180 and put it into the, uh, for, for activities at the grist mill. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. So thank that's, you. That's I'm sorry that you had to forward. stay here. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, but this is better than a movie. You have yeah, to I, you know, it was, I was just going to watch reruns on TV. So. <laughs> <laughs> you would be better off watching paint dry. I learned a lot. I sure did. <laughs> Thank you for coming you. in. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, are we going to agree to either of these schedules? They're both the same schedule, Mary Louise. One is the selectmen's meeting and the other is the meetings of the department heads. That's, it just says when the, when the right. department heads are going to be there. I'll Which make a motion that we accept the schedule as proposed. For 2020? For 2020. I'll second it. All those in no. favor? I'm, I'm opposed. We're, we're still too many. Regina? No meetings. 
here that we should be meeting every Monday night unless it's a Regina. Holiday. I agree. Okay, so Wait, it's I, four. I, I agree to the motion. Four and one against. Yep. yep. Um, cl any cl closing comments? Um, I have one question for town manager. Yeah. Um, Fred, what time does the town hall close on Christmas Eve? Five o'clock. Five o'clock? Okay. Yep. Unless, uh, you know, unless people want to take time off. It's a regular work okay, day no, for I us. Just, yeah. it, it's a regular work day. Okay. And did you have something to say, Mark? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you could uh, entertain a motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e uh, litigation. I will so move. I'll second that before we do. I would like to wish everybody out there a and happy and safe Merry Christmas. Yes. And do what time is it, Mark? I don't know. 2142. <laughs> 945. Okay, 945. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, I think we need the time. Oh, yes, I agree. So, what do we have to do? I, 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 yeah, I, 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 and I'm signing off, Mark. Okay. Correct. Thank and, you. And um, thank you, Regina. Merry Christmas to everybody you, out yeah. there. Y